All right, hello, Fortinos, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is March 12th, 2023. Welcome back. Today, we're going to do another big video. We are going to cover a bunch of stuff. To some who have been around for a while, you will have seen pretty much all of this. You know, as, as things have developed, we're always able to add more detail into it. But this was one that I promised a couple of people in the forum. We had a, a new sister in the forum, and she was sharing with a friend who had said, you know, uh, uh, we must be wrong because we didn't talk about Revel uh, uh, Daniel chapter 12. And, of course, you know, we've talked about Daniel chapter 12 many times over the years. The person just hadn't seen any videos on it. So it prompted me, though, to just do another complete detail Daniel video. And it was interesting because we had another sister that said, you know, she she was trying to remember where it was. She hadn't really, you know, followed and there were still some questions. So I figured today would be a great one to do it. And it's kind of I'll probably use the title similar to the last one. Right. So instead of creations to tribulations, it's going to be Daniel to tribulation. <coughs> right. Complete. So that's what we're going to do today. And not just Daniel nine or Daniel 12. We're going to hit all the main sections of Daniel. We're going to go from Daniel 2. I think we'll then go into Daniel 5 a little bit to Daniel 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We're going to cover the whole thing. We're going to connect it to the book of Revelation. We're going to connect it to the timing in the Gospels. We're just going to take it through the whole deal. You need to remember, right? Everything works in typologies, right? That's something that a lot of people forget about. You know, I shared it many, many times. You guys all know it. Everybody knows this from Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9. The thing that has been is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. There is no new thing under the sun. So what does that mean? That means that everything that was from creation, from the first creation in the beginning, to the end of the Old Testament and from the New Testament. So the Old Testament is what's considered here hath been, the, 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 what we call was. The is done is the New Testament. Those are the things that are from Christ until the moment of the pre-trib escape. All of those are the is. So all that is done, all that was done. It doesn't say one of them shall be, it says both of them shall be. What was shall be and what is shall be. And the shall be done is that which is to come. Okay? It's all about the end of days. So when people understand that, you see a lot of people have troubles with saying, well, types and shadows. You know, one pastor who is very good at it is um, uh, uh, Perry Stone. A lot of people don't like Pat Perry Stone going to teach at their at their ministries, right, at their churches because of the, the types and shadows. And it's a, it's difficult for a lot of pastors to try to comprehend it because everything they're looking at is just in a historical sense of things that have taken place. They're they're not yet able to see because they don't spend the time. There's not a lot of a lot of study done into typologies, but clearly. It's all about typologies to help people understand the events in the is to come. That's what it's all about. That's what this is all about. And because it's never really taught on in the typologies, why isn't it taught on? Because what was and what is are giving insight into the prophetic. And how many churches teach on prophecy? You see, are we excessive in prophecy? Yeah, that's my calling. <laughs> you know, that's what I've been called to do. That's the revelation of the open book that I've been given here. Right. It's just digging and digging and it's just spirit leading. It's funny. We came back from family dinner and I was just having this conversation with my kids today. You know, my wife and kids, um, as I was putting this video together this afternoon, like, again, all of these tabs are for today's video. So you're definitely going to want to take your time and study it if it's new to you. For those that it's not overly new to you, that's okay. How do you get better in understanding? How can you go from one to the next to the next to the next? 
repetition. Repetition, repetition, repetition. All right? So it doesn't hurt to study it and seek it and find these new connections or follow along to discover some of these new little pieces we'll add in here and there and understanding what these timings are in these scriptures because that's something that's given a lot of people a lot of headache what's this 1290 and 2300 and time times and half a time and and all of these things how does it all connect to the revelation of the end of days well like i said i was when i was putting it together this afternoon i was kind of just feeling a little blah earlier in the day and i knew why because i hadn't yet put it together and and i don't you know it's funny because I, I was telling my family on the way home that it's so amazing. It blows me away because I, it's not to brag. It's the Spirit using me, right? It's the Lord through the, through the Spirit in the Father's will that this is happening. That I could have just woken up in this, in this morning and had a microphone in front of me and just gone into all of it and gone back and forth, back into this, that, that. It's incredible. I don't even understand how I can do it. It's completely God-given, spirit-led, right? And when I, when I was feeling a little bit more bummed, it's because I know I hadn't laid out just so that my mind could be at ease and I'm not going to be concerned about missing this or missing that. I'm just going to lay it out, have all the tabs open, and maybe touch on some of those tabs as need be to keep on track and just lay out all of Daniel for everybody that's been interested, okay? It's, it's a big video. It's, it's a deep teaching. For, like I said, for those that have been around for a bit, it's not going to be so much of a big deal. But for those that are newer or that are new or who will see it in the future, you're going to hear some things that are just going to blow you away. But I promise you, if you take the time to diligently seek what is revealed in these videos here, it will be worth every second of your time. Okay, you're going to hear things that are going to seem crazy to you at first, like 14 years. Oh my goodness, the tribulation is 14 years. I thought it was seven. It's actually 14. And the reason you think it's seven is because the whole world has been taught from the gospel of Matthew because they've never understood who the gospels were speaking to. And that's where this ministry started about five and a half years ago. And it's interesting because today... I was at a shop and I was talking to the guy behind the counter. I see him regularly and he's a Muslim and we started talking today. We've, I've talked about it a couple times over the years and we had another like 15, 20 minute chat about it all. And, uh, you know, it's, it's awesome because some of the things that we know that they believe, we know, you know, a little bit of their extra book, right? Like their Hadith and some of their beliefs within the Quran, we, we, we can understand it and we can stand against them. We can go to our scriptures and prove these things out. And so it was, it was just wonderful, especially to be able to talk about the 40 days of the Son of Man with them. You know, they believe it's the Dajjal, and we know it's the Son of Man after the escape. And it was just, it was a great conversation because why? Well, we believe the time is at hand, right? We know the time is close at hand. We're looking for it to take place in April. Yes, around April 7th, it will be connected to true Feast of First Fruits. Then the 50 days and the 14 years of tribulation, seven years of seals, seven years of trumpets, will begin by Feast of Weeks. At true Feast of Weeks 2023 would be the beginning of it all. Is it a thus say it the Lord? No, nope. it's scripture. It is revelation upon revelation, opening of books and continuously, diligently seeking our Lord, just as Enoch did, okay? This is what we're doing. And so when you hear some of these things like 14 years and who the Gospels are speaking to, you're going to be scratching your head big time. Well, what you need to do is you need to come to this playlist right here, the Revealed End Time Study Note Series, okay? This is it right here. So this is video one, two, three. There's 11 videos in here. The key ones to focus on to really begin to understand what's been revealed here are the first three. The first one that began the whole thing for us on September 8th, as you'll read about in 2017, was this revelation of who the Gospels were speaking to that started to get revealed. It's absolutely beautiful. If you've ever wondered why there's these apparent contradictions in Scripture, 
and your pastor or you've heard teachings that it's just it's perspectives yet they all teach from matthew and say mark and luke and the synoptic gospels they just give us you know a different perspective a different point of view well that doesn't answer the question in most of those apparent contradictions there are many things that are clearly different about the same story and the reason for it is the lord has filled the gospels with prophecy we have revealed this from dozens upon dozens upon dozens of places within the gospels and every time we have it is proven 100 percent truth with every single other piece that's been proven before it that's what you're going to begin to understand in this video it's a 30 minute bible study I read from a printout that I did from a from a typo that I did only six pages. You can come into the description box below, print it out, follow along. You can do the same with a number of these videos that have a printout that I'm reading from. And once you begin to understand these videos, at least these first two, you can always go to ministryrevealed.com. You can join us there in the forum for free. Over 1,100 people around the world sharing news and events and prayer requests and, and Bible studies and all sorts of things in there. But from the website, you'll also find our book uh, for, from Ministry Revealed. You can find it on free PDF in five languages. You can find it in audio uh, for free, uh, audio reading in English. Um, you can go to Amazon if you want the ebook. And you can also go to Amazon if you just like to have a paperback as well. But you can also read it for free from the website, or you can actually download the PDF for free as well. And the reason I bring it up is because once you begin to understand who the Gospels are speaking to, you can go into chapter one of the book and go into greater detail. And even that book doesn't even cover the depth that we've continued on since that time. We didn't even put it all in. There was, it was just too much. Okay? It's absolutely incredible. And what you're going to come to understand is something that is so important for everybody to understand. And that is that Matthew, Mark, and Luke of the Synoptic Gospels, the first will be last, the last will be first. Matthew, excuse me, Matthew, Mark, Luke, in the end of days is Luke, Mark, Matthew. And you're going to come to understand this when you realize in that intro video of who the Gospels are speaking to, you'll see things like Jesus was arrayed in a white robe or a gorgeous robe, which means white, radiant, beautiful. That's what it was in Luke. When he went to the crucifixion, in Mark, he was arrayed in purple. In Matthew, he was arrayed in scarlet. What's the bride? Dressed in white. What are the tribulation colors? Purple and scarlet. It's absolutely incredible you're going to realize that Luke is pre-trib, Mark is mid-trib, and Matthew is post-trib. So all those people that have debated and argued back and forth, it's pre-trib, it's mid-trib, it's post-trib, because there's scriptures for all of it. The answer is that they're all true, but it doesn't play out over seven years. You can come and watch these videos to understand pre, mid, and post, they're all true. There's typologies of it in the three triumphal entries of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, or Luke, Mark, Matthew, in the transfiguration, in the resurrection stories. They are all typologies of pre, mid, and post, a taking, a taking, and a returning. You can come down to the last video and understand the discourses as you have never understood them before. There's a reason for all of the differences and it'll blow you away. Once you begin to understand these differences, you're gonna realize that, oh my goodness, it's because I've been taught from Matthew. For hundreds of years, we've been taught from the Gospel of Matthew, and we've looked at the others as just accessory add-on points that weren't in Matthew. The truth is, it was the difference of who the Gospels were speaking to, and when you realize it, you're gonna realize that Mark's Gospel is to the tribulation of seals. That's why the great multitude rapture is between the end of the sixth seal and before the start of the seventh seal. You see, it's not pre-trib, that's the mid-trib. Luke's is the pre-trib, the one that's more of the mystery. At the end of the seven years of trumpets, at the end of six to the seventh year of trumpets, 
The Lord then returns feet down on the Mount of Olives. And once you begin to understand it's all about who the Gospels are speaking to, all of this will open up to you. And this big video right here, the third one, it's all because of Matthew, is exactly as the title says, because it's all because of Matthew. For centuries and centuries, we've been taught from a foundation and a perspective of Matthew's gospel. And that has caused everybody to unknowingly look through the lens of the house of Judah. It's incredible. Once you see that video, once you realize these things, everything will start to unravel and open up to you. And this twisted knot of seven years and seals and trumpets overlapping, yet they're, they're different events. While you see, some people will say three and a half years of seals and three and a half years of trumpets, you'll see it's absolutely not true. You're going to be able to see it for the first time crystal clear. And when you think 14 years of tribulation, oh my goodness. Don't worry, because you know what that means? That means the pre-trib escape is sooner than everybody thinks. Does everybody thinking seven years think it's happening now? Yes, they think it's happening always, right? But the point is, if it was only seven, then we'd have about seven more years to go. So rejoice in the fact that it's 14, because that means it's seven years earlier. Okay? You're going to see this difference within the Gospels, within their discourses. And you're going to see Luke's represents a 50-day period. The pre-trib bride goes first. Then there's a 50-day period of time, 40 days of the Son of Man, when he will return after the wedding. He will meet with a group that we call the remnant bride. He will remain for 40 days doing signs and wonders while the world thinks he's the Antichrist. And then after 40 days, he's going to leave like he did at the end of Acts 1. You see? And then the 14 years will begin with a, what we call Acts 2.0, the anointing upon this group that was with them during those 40 days, which is that remnant bride portion. They are the, the church of Smyrna remnant bride workers. They're the Luke 24 disciples that followed Jesus. All right. It's a wild, wild ride of understanding. And to, <laughs> I definitely don't suggest taking it all in at once, but we've had a lot of people over the years that when they began, we, they began to understand these things with the, with the discourse, I mean, with the Gospels and with the 14 years, they just soaked it up and they spent hours and days watching the videos and understanding and digging deeper and deeper and deeper. Because once you do, you will never be the same. You will be so much more excited to seek the scriptures than you ever have in your life. And you know why? Because you'll be able to understand them. All of these mysteries, all of these questions that had so many scratching their heads. If at any point you've ever been diligent and really spending time in his word, I guarantee you, you will have had questions, many of them, that are answered here in this ministry. That's how awesome it is. All right. If you want to go to the website, you see ministryrevealed.com right there. You can also come over here, Ministry Revealed. You can just click on the website. You can support the ministry. We've got Facebook and Twitter where we have a brother and sister that post for us. Uh, we have another brother that posts all of our videos on the website as well. Everything is free. The website, every absolutely everything is free. Uh, like I said, even the book, except if you want the paperback or ebook from Amazon. But it's also for free on the website as well. So. Like I said, let's get started. We're going to begin this in the book of Daniel. Well, it's all going to be the book of Daniel, but it's going to take us through a ride through tribulation. And you're going to see that the book of Daniel in the typology, so the things that was and is and is to come, you're going to see all of these typologies revealing this is to come. You're going to see it from the, the image of Nebuchadnezzar. You're going to see it from from the um, uh, Daniel 7 and the four beasts. It just go, it goes all the way through. And some people will say, oh, well, what that really was in Daniel 8 is that's when um, Alexander the Great and his kingdom was divided into four and all these things. Yeah, remember what I said? It's the was, the is, and the is to come. What was shall be, what is shall be that the end of days is going to play out 
like I've shared many times, this is a great image. This is from the book. It's, uh, where is it? Page 128 in the book. It's about the seven churches. And what you come to see is the history, right? Like the Old Testament. You have all of these typologies that are like the Smyrna, Ephesus, and all this that are typologies in the Old Testament. And this played out over 2,000 years, right? This is the New Testament, okay? From the apostles till the time of the apostolic age, the, the Laodicean age that we're in right now. All of this is played out over what? About 2,000 years. So you have the was, you have the is, and then you have the is to come of the seven churches. This played out over 2,000 years. This played out over about uh, 2,000 years. And this, all of these typologies from the was and from the is, as Ecclesiastes 9 says, will play out in typologies. Are you ready for this? Over 14 years. It sounds absolutely absurd. But that is how intense the end of days are going to be. It's the reason why the Lord tells us in the discourses of Matthew and Mark that it'll be a time like it never was to this point. And then in Matthew, it'll be a time like it never was since the creation of the world. That's how intense it's going to be. All right. So let's go in here into Daniel chapter 2. And in Daniel chapter 2, you know, this is a great uh, starting point. In Daniel chapter 2, verse 21, we're going to hit the key points. It says, He gives wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwells with him. This is clearly what's been going on in this ministry. I'm sure in many other ministries in different ways. But this revealing of these secret things that he makes known to whom he chooses. Not that I was anything special. Not that those in this ministry know anything special that, that, that they were so special. It was simply the Lord's will. I can't explain it, but we can prove it. You know that? That's why it's so incredible. We can prove it by the revelations themselves. That's how awesome it is. Daniel 2.28, But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Remember that? Look at this word for latter days. This one's only used one time, but it has its core because it's the same as 319. See? A future in the latter end of days. That's what it means. So even though this is one typology, this is one type and shadow. There are others in Daniel as well. And what I'm talking about that about is this vision that Daniel ha um, that Nebuchadnezzar had about this great image, right? So in Daniel 2 verse starting in verse 31, thou, O king, sawest and behold a great image, this great image whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image, this image's head was of fine gold, his breasts and arms of silver, and his belly and thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till the stone was cut without hands. Hello. Thou sawest till the, a stone was cut without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and brake them into pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken into pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away that no place should be found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. What do you think that is? Okay. Everybody knows this one, right? It's a huge picture. I mean, you find pictures on this everywhere. What is this all about? And what many people will tell you is it's the typology, and all we're waiting for now is the ten toes. No. The entire storyline from the head of gold 
down to the ten toes is the is to come. It's a typology still of seals. And of course, it's Babylon at the end of days. It's Media Persia. Right? You've got Greece, you've got Rome, you've got divided Roman Empire, and you've got the ten toes. Who's this stone coming down that's going to crush it and become a great mountain? Right? We know that pretty well too, don't we? We go into Revelation chapter 6. And what do we know about Revelation chapter 6? Revelation chapter 6 is at the end of the sixth seal. It's the end of the sixth year of seals. Not that each seal is one year, one year, one year. That's not how it's going to be. But that six years of seals will play out this first six seals. And what do you see? The whole earth is freaking out, right? They're all hiding in the mountains and in the holes, of right? With rock. Uh, um, said, and they said unto the mountains, here it is right there. Hid themselves in the dens, there we go, and in the rocks of the mountains. And said unto the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath is come. This is the end of six years of seals. What do we know happens at this point? Well, we know it's the Ezekiel 39 war, right? We covered it in, the, I believe it was even in the last video. The Ezekiel 39 war is precisely when the Lord comes. That's why it was so awesome to see Stephen Bendenu not fully getting it, but seeing something that he titled, you know, alien type, right? Extraterrestrial, we should say, not alien. Extraterrestrial coming down. It's the Lord coming on heavenly Mount Zion, that stone carved without hand that becomes a great mountain. You see, when this Gog-Magog battle takes place, and then what do they do? They're going to turn their spears into pruning hooks and so forth, right? And it says that they're going to burn weapons with fire for seven years. We showed that those seven years represent the seventh year of seals, the six years of trumpets, and then there's another battle. So when those seven years are done, they're going to take those pruning hooks and, and so forth, and they're going to turn them back into spears like you read in Isaiah. It's absolutely incredible to understand. And you see, what else do you see? Seven months, they're going to be burying them. So we know what? We know that the rapture group, when they come in, they don't know exactly when, they're, when their time is that they're going to be taken in the rapture, but it's sometime around the middle of the seventh year of seals. And this is, this is exactly what you're seeing here being explained in Ezekiel chapter 39. So when we look at this, again, in relation to the image, you see, what we're going to do as we keep going forward is we're going we're gonna to see the Babylon and Persia and Greece and so forth and have all of this covered in relation to seals. And you're going to see that Daniel spends a lot of his time giving us images <clears throat> that he has seen of his dreams and visions of the portion of seals. And only a small portion of the time that he talks about things is trumpets time. And it's, it's really quite incredible. And the reason for it is because trumpets, the first half of trumpets, as we know, the Lord is here. Remember, he's, he's the stone. He's the stone that becomes a great mountain. He's the one that's coming on heavenly Mount Zion. They're going to then, at the beginning of trumpets, start rebuilding the city and the streets and the temple. But you got to remember, it's still trumpets. There's still the first four trumpets taking place with disasters and a third of everything burning up and being destroyed around the earth. My theory on that is that a lot of those places where that's happening are probably places that have already been so decimated and destroyed with death and with ruin during the time of seals that those are probably a good majority of the places where it's happening. Okay? Jerusalem is going to be protected. You remember this? You see the exact same thing in 2 Esdras. Here's when the Most High will deliver those who are upon the earth. This is the pre-trib. Bewilderment of mind shall come upon those who dwell on the earth and they shall plan to make war against each other. Right? Nation against nation, city against city, place against place. That's the beginning of trumpets. I'm uh, sorry. That's the beginning of tribulation at the red horse rider. This is the beginning of the 14 years. This 
is the 50 days that comes first. This, when they go to war, starting against Jerusalem, is the beginning of the Red Horse Rider and the start of the 14 years. We, we've talked about this many times. Then it says, then these things which shall come to pass after, which I've told you about, they're all in these other things, he says, that I've already explained to you. He says, then will my son be revealed. Okay, and what does it say? Every man shall leave his own land in the warfare they have against one another and an innumerable multitude shall come to be gathered as you saw coming to conquer him. But he shall stand on top of Mount Zion and Zion will come to be made manifest to all people prepared and built as you saw the mountain carved without hands. Why do you think he's coming on heavenly Mount Zion? Why is, what's the purpose of the image of that stone with Nebuchadnezzar coming and crushing it down at the feet? Why, did, why does Daniel tell us that it becomes a great mountain and it's the mo mountain carved without hand, right? And the stone smote the image and became a great mountain. See? Because the rapture group doesn't go to the third heaven. The pre-trib bride of Christ goes to the third heaven. The rapture group is going to paradise. And paradise is in heavenly Mount Zion. This is where the rapture group is going to be taken, just as the second time in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 tells us. First group goes to the third heaven, second one goes to paradise. This is him coming with paradise, and it is the place prepared just as we've read in the past in relation to Mark's group, okay? Let's see, um, in, we'll keep going in verse, Daniel 2, verse 38, and wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of heaven shall uh, hath he given into the hand and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art his head of gold. Well, what do we know about the head of gold? That's what goes first, right? So, so the mystery in the end of days, and I still have a video I've been wanting to teach on this for a long time. Actually, I'm not ready to teach on, but I've been planning on studying for probably a year now, and I keep pushing it forward in the calendar, is I believe there's more than one end time Babylon. There's probably three. So the question is, which one is the first one? Aha. Uh -huh. You know, is it, is it all of America? Is it, is it uh, Washington or New York? Is it, is it California, Los Angeles area in California? <clears throat> you know, which is it? Is it Rome? You see, which is it? And there's not too much clarity there yet because... When you look further into it, it would appear that there's more than one being referenced, all right? But clearly, this one here in the head of gold is gone at the beginning. If it's the first one to be removed, what do we know happens at the time of the media and Persians? This is the beginning of the 14 years. This is the one that makes the decree, which means this one is going early. So whichever Babylon this represents, it's going early. Sometimes it makes me think, I wonder if it's even Jerusalem being being referenced in this type. I'm not saying it is, don't, don't mistake me with that. I'm not, I'm not saying it is at all, but whatever this is, I don't think it's all of America that's gonna be destroyed in the first 50 days or towards the end of the 50 days. But there is some destruction coming to that great city, right? Again, maybe it's Rome to start it, right? But clearly, the destruction comes upon Rome, uh, upon Babylon early on. And listen to what it says, verse 39. And after these shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and, a, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom, listen to this, shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. Okay? Look at this, breaketh in pieces. You see that? 
this breaketh in pieces. When we go to Daniel chapter 7, Daniel 7, look at what it says. You'll find it all over the place. Okay? Break in pieces. See this fourth beast? See, we're going to get to Daniel 7. You guys know we've talked on it many times, but we're going to lay it all out in this continuous sequence, showing it being repeated and repeated and repeated throughout Daniel and only very little being given about trumpets. And part of the reason is because the Lord is there for the first half, right? So look at what it says. Here's the fourth beast, the minion, right? The fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth, and it devoured, and there it is, same word, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the other beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns, okay? Yet, we're still all the way back in Daniel chapter 2, and this has nothing to do with apparently has nothing to do with Daniel chapter 2 to Daniel chapter 7 and the lion and the bear and the leopard and the fourth beast. Yet you're seeing the entire conversation of it right here. Okay? There it is. Fourth kingdom will break in pieces. So what they would try to tell us in history is they would say, well, because this already took place, it, it's the it's the pastors, it's it's those that have taught from the seminaries that don't fully understand that this entire thing, what was shall be. And they are filled with typologies. It's not just what has already happened. There is typologies all the way through. And this is what we're showing. So this fourth kingdom is exactly as the fourth beast of Revelation. Okay? What do we know that this fourth beast that breaks in pieces has ah look at what he has he has feet with what toes how many toes do you have on the feet ten how many how many horns does the beast have in daniel 7 the fourth beast he's got ten horns you see the typology it's the exact same thing it's the same picture or the same typology in a different picture these things have happened in history. They've happened, they've happened in the was, they've happened in the is, and they're going to be in the is to come. You see? Uh, and in the days of his kingdom, Daniel 2.44, and in the days of his kingdom, uh, uh, sorry, and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, and it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. Hello. You see? When is he coming to consume all these kingdoms? <laughs> it's the exact same story that we've read a hundred times from Daniel chapter 7. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter and the dream is certain and the interpretation thereof sure interesting right verse 47 the king answered unto daniel and said of a truth uh, it is that your god is a god of gods and a lord of kings isn't that interesting it sounds kind of sim similar right you gotta understand this is being said from nebuchadnezzar so you have Uppercase G of lowercase G gods. Who is this? This is the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Jesus is God, but he's not God the Father. He's God the Son. God the Father gave it all to Christ to go and create. That's why in the beginning, in Christ, God created. In Christ, the Father created everything. Christ created it all. The plans were given to him by the Father, which is why he only did what the Father gave him to do. Only spoke what the Father gave him to speak. So you see, uppercase G, lowercase, uppercase L of kings. Sounds very similar. You know why? Because if you follow this when he comes as a mountain carved without hands, right? We know that's when he comes at the end of seals or at the end of six years of seals. 
And it's that battle, right? It's that battle of Gog and Magog and so forth in the typology of the stone throwing at it. It's like Revelation chapter 6. Well, you know what else it is? It's also the story in Revelation chapter 17. What ends up happening? And the ten horns. Ten horns, ten toes, remember? Which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is uppercase L Lord of lowercase lords and uppercase king of lowercase kings. You see, it's the same typology. Why? It's the exact same typology because the ten toes is no different than the ten horns. It's just another picture that we're being shown in relation to the latter days in the what was to the what is and both being the is to come. Okay? It's pretty straightforward. Uh, one of the biggest reasons, and we've talked about this many times, the reason churches have so much trouble with this is because they don't understand that there's more than one seven. How are you going to explain this? How are you going to break this all down? So what are most thinking? They're thinking Rome divided, right? Like Rome's coming again. It's going to be divided. We're just waiting on the time of the ten toes. This is why there's a group of people, a, a significant group of people around the world that believe we've already gone through all of the seals except we're waiting for the seventh seal. Not sorry, for the sixth seal. They believe they're waiting, that we're at a period where we're waiting for the sixth seal. Well, why do you think that? Well, if you go look at the picture in Nebuchadnezzar's dream, they're believing it's just the time of the ten toes. They're going to destroy. The Lord's going to come and destroy them. It won't be long. And then why? Well, because then you have a group of 144,000 being sealed and you have a rapture of the great multitude. You see, there's, there's no good way of trying to understand the book of Revelation in seven years without mashing it all together, without skipping a portion that, that is clearly all there that hasn't happened. You see, they, it has to be figured out. So when you read this, you see, see, it's the great multitude. That means everybody's going pre-trip. But the truth is, when you understand the 14 years, you realize this is mid-trib, and there's a reason why it's after the sixth seal and before the seventh seal. <clears throat> you see, because this is in the seventh year of seals. It is the Mark group. You see, Luke is speaking to the bride of Christ. Mark is speaking to the house of Israel, and the Gentiles are grafted in. They're scattered throughout the earth. Nobody knows who they are. It's church believers that aren't diligent, that, that really aren't living in Christ, spirit-filled. They're going to go through seals. Some will fall away, but a good majority will come in, and more new ones will come in, and it will be the greatest revival in human history during the worst time in human history. And then Matthew is to the house of Judah and to the Jews. Okay? This is the great multitude. This is that group that is going to the mountain carved without hand that becomes the, the stone that becomes a great mountain, that is the place prepared, which is paradise. Okay? This is what we're seeing in Daniel chapter 2. And this type of thing just carries on with different images all throughout the book of Daniel. Let's go to Daniel chapter 5. <clears throat> in Daniel chapter 5, there's not too much to cover. Three and four, you know, it's it, it's um, Nebuchadnezzar the king and what happens. And and I think it's his son, the one that takes over next. And and he's obviously a, a, a fool. And we know what happens here. We get this handwriting on the wall. OK. And look at what we see. Daniel's going to be clothed in scarlet, right? All these things. We see here in Daniel 5, 25. Oh, and by the way. When it comes to the image, we're not done just because, you know, what covered in Daniel chapter 2. You're going to see as we go forward, it's going to be yet again 
talking about the Medes and Persians, right? It's going to be talking about Greece. It's going to be talking about 10 horns instead of 10 toes. Yet, the image is talking about rams and horns and everything else. But you're going to see the same groups that are still involved in all of this. Okay? So, the image is always part of the conversation still going forward, even though it changes to rams and it changes to, to, to horns and all of these other things. It's simply another image being given to us. So here it is right here. Listen to what it says. In Daniel 9, 20, uh, sorry, in Daniel 5, starting in verse 25, and this is the writing that was written, many, many tekel a, a parson, <laughs> I'll leave that alone. And he goes on to describe what it means, that thy kingdom and uh, uh, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Thou art weighted in the balances and art found wanting. Thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Okay, this is important. The Medes and Persians. Who are the Medes and per Persians? They're the silver, right? The, the two arms and the chest. And it says, listen to this. Uh, Daniel 5.29, towards the end that he should be the third ruler of the kingdom, okay? And it says in verse 30 and 31, this is talking about Daniel, okay? That Daniel should be the thir third ruler in the kingdom. In that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain, okay? Now this other one, he was just there for a little bit. They were drinking out of all of the vessels, right? All of the golden vessels, all those things that they took from the temple. Sound familiar? Remember what happens when the attack comes on Jerusalem? They attack them. They're going to be taking their gold and their vessels, and they're going to be what? Taking them to, to um, what is it? Even to Babylon, right? Just like we read in the other portions of the book. So then it says, listen to this, in verse 31, 531, And Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about 32 years old. Okay? So now what happens? Darius what? the Mede, okay? So the Medes and Persians. Now we know it's talking about Media Persia. They're the ones that are taking the kingdom, okay? What is this period of time when the Medes and Persians take over? It's the beginning of the 14 years. It's the beginning of the 14 years. It's right in that zone. You see? These other things is, is, is the prelude. It's, it's the stuff building and building. And it sounds very much like this is what's building during the first 50 days. You see, there are two attacks that we know are coming at the start of the 50 days and at the end of the 50 days. The first one is in northern Israel over Haifa and Tel Aviv is where I believe it is, just like Isaiah 9 tells us. Okay? Those two places in the north before the Son of Man comes, the, the government on his shoulders, right? It's a typology of his birth in the 40 days of the Son of Man. All of this is happening during this 50-day period. All of this. This is representing, the head of gold is representing this 50-day period. Because we know when Cyrus comes to take over, right? The Darius and Cyrus, the Mede and the Persian, right? The two arms. This is the beginning of the 14 years. This, this is the, the Ishmael type. This is the, when the, the Antichrist figure will be here, but he's not given his power to continue yet. Okay, he's going to be in the background. He's going to be here. But his power to continue. We're going to talk about those, those numbers later as well. The months and the day counts and so forth. We'll cover that towards the end. But this is something that happens right in the beginning. So if we've understood this year, and we finally understood this 70th for Israel, and the count to, oops, 2016, and the count to, the Feast of Weeks, then that means between here and here, this year, 
whoever this first Babylon is, whoever this Bab, uh, uh, this head of gold is to be represented by, it's going to be destroyed. Maybe it's just Washington. Maybe it's Washington and, and a chunk of the East Coast. That's the kind of stuff that's still, you know, it's still fairly hard to be able to discern what Babylon it is. But we just saw this is when they take over when the head of gold is destroyed. And, you know, in the past, I've shared this as well. In Revelation chapter 14, okay, we've got a video actually on um, revealing the book of Revelation with a focus from when the seals start to the middle of chapter 14. All of it in order laid out. It's You can never understand it if you don't understand first the 14 years. It'll blow your mind. So we see here, right, the lamb is on Mount Zion. See, isn't that interesting? How was the lamb standing on Mount Zion with the 144,000? You see, many people will tell you that, oh, it's the babies. <laughs> it's the babies that were killed in the time of Christ at his birth, and they're in heaven, and they're returning with the Lord, and they're the 144,000. No. But you see, that type of story, that kind of thinking, has to just be pulled out of things because they can't understand. So eventually they convince themselves of it. But it's because the understanding hasn't been yet revealed to them. What is the lamb doing on Mount Zion if Mount Zion is here? Hello. The reason he's on Mount Zion is because he was that stone that became a great mountain at the end of the sixth seal. And then he's there and then trumpets, Mount Zion will be there. The rapture group goes there to paradise and... Then the rebuilding starts in trumpets <clears throat> before mid trumpets and more craziness comes. But look at what you see down here. When we come down here, we see some very interesting things. Why? Well, because when you understand the things in this ministry, like seven, eight, nine, and it ends in 20, to us, we understand that it's what? It's six years of seals, the seventh, the Lord is here, he destroys the enemy, the rapture happens, you have three and a half years of trumpets. The Satan is cast down. The pit is open. There's a two and a half year battle. When the two and a half year battle is done, it's the end of 13 years and the Lord will then return feet down on the Mount of Olives. Well, that 13th year is also the 20th in the big picture of the seven easy for Luke, right? For those that think, what is he talking about? <coughs> seven easy years for Luke. Because like Jacob, there was seven easy years. Then he got Leah and had married Leah. After the wedding, he gets Rachel, but he has to fulfill seven more years. Then he's got to fulfill six more years for a total of 20 years. And then he makes a covenant with his father-in-law at the end of 20, right? Which is the same as what will happen at the end of the 13th year of seals. I mean, of, of tribulation. So the first seven are what we're in now, what we call quote unquote easy years, especially compared to tribulation. He's preparing his bride. He's waking his bride up. And that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing that this is the ending at 20. So when we come back up here, it's like we're what? Well, it's like we're coming to the end of this right now, right? Saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come. If we're in the seventh year right now, as I showed from this, and we're in this seventh year, this is what's about to be proclaimed. And the hour of his judgment has come. And then what do you see at the beginning of the 14 years, right? The typology of it. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city. We've gone through this in the past, right? Even I think in the other video we did with Daniel. Then you've got, you see the mark of the beast that's talked about coming and so forth. So even before the mark of the beast, Babylon is destroyed. That's kind of what we're seeing with this head of gold in Daniel. We're seeing that Babylon is destroyed first, which means that the 14 years begins at the time of the Arab leadership, at the time of this Muslim period that will take over, right? A lot of people forget this when it comes to the end of days, and they'll they'll call they'll call the Antichrist the French leader. They'll call the Antichrist uh, Kim Jong Il. They'll call the Antichrist Trump or Obama. Although Obama is is a Muslim, so 
you know, they'll call all these different people the Antichrist. The Antichrist is going to be an Arab Muslim. Okay? That will be the beginning of tribulation. The, be the beginning of the 14 years, even though there was 50 days before. Okay? So now look at what we see when we come to chapter 6. Remember? Remember how chapter 5 ended? How did chapter 5 end? Babylon is now done. And who takes over? Median. Okay? Media Persia. They rule, they have a ruling together. You're going to see this. Which means this is the time, bam, the 50 days have come to an end. You guys following that? The 50 days are coming to, have come to an end and the 14 years are about to begin. Okay? It's right in that end time typology. Well, how about this? Look at how verse 1 of Daniel 6 starts. And it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes. Isn't that interesting? You say, well, why is that interesting? What do we know about the end of days? The 50 days go from John's resurrection story. He anoints the apostles, right? Let's go to the book again. He anoints the apostles. This is a representation. They're here for all of seals, the apostles, but they're represented in this first seven to the eight days while the wedding is in heaven. He breathes on them like he does in John 20 and he leaves and comes back after eight days. He meets with them briefly. Then he goes to the Luke group, which is now the start of the 40 days. So this starts the 50 while there's the wedding in heaven. The escape happened. There's a wedding in heaven. He returns after seven on the eighth day. And what's going to happen? He meets with them briefly, the apostles. And then he's now with the Luke 24, with the Smyrna group, disciple workers. And the 40 days begin. These guys will be here during seals as well. Okay. This is... This group here, Smyrna, this, this Luke 24 group that will receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost at the end of 50 days. Okay? Well, how about this? When you go to Acts chapter 1, we know it's the end what? <clears throat> it's the end of the 40 days of the Son of Man. When the end of the 40 days of the Son of Man, that's 47 days have been complete. There's three days left to Acts chapter 2 and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, which we're told is not many days from now. And what's fascinating about it, how many of them are there to receive that anointing? Check this out. Acts 1, verse 15. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples, okay, the disciple guys, and said the number of the names together were about 120. We just showed and we know from the end time revelation that the 14 years begins at the media persia one and what do we know begins the 14 years 50 days come to an end and what happens here the anointing of the holy ghost upon the disciples of which history was the 120 Pro future will be much more right what's the typology 120 of them being anointed. Pretty funny how that works, right? <clears throat> right at the time when it's the time for Media and Persia to step forward. Right in the place where it should be. In Daniel chapter 6, starting in verse 1. Remember, it's typologies. Now look at what we see. Decrees going out. Okay? Now what happens? Decrees. Daniel 6, verse 7. Uh, all the presidents of the kingdom, the governors, the princes, the counselors, and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute, okay? A decree. And to make a firm decree that whosoever shall have a petition of any man uh, uh, of God or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians. Why is there this? What's this decree about? What's this decree? That you can't now pray to the God of Israel. You see, you can no longer pray to the Lord. You see, he got this, this king Right, he kind of got swindled into doing it, right? He does it and what happens? 
Daniel in verse 10. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his, win uh, and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled, down on, uh, he kneeled down upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. So what's going to happen? We all know the story, right? Daniel gets taken. You see, it has to be what? According to the law of the Medes and the Persians, because it's what? It's going to be the time of the Muslim rule. It's the Arabs, in particular, Muslim rule, right? They're, they're Mahdi guys. But remember, he's not in full power and full authority yet. War is breaking out everywhere. Remember, there's World War III. That's, it's not just one thing happening in this part of the world. There's things going on all over the earth. <clears throat> but what are we seeing here in this piece? We're seeing that now persecution is going to take place. And look at what Smyrna represents, the church of, uh, uh, the church of the Roman persecution. Okay, remember, this is a was, right? I mean, an is. Okay, this is the Roman one in the is. You have the period of Israel's wanderings. It's not the part where Antichrist gets his power yet to continue 42 months. This is not, this is not the, um, uh, uh, the Antichrist <coughs> receiving his time. This isn't the fourth beast, right? This is still Media Persia. And this Antichrist character is there and he's going to, he's going to be building and have some sort of authority in the background, but he's not yet the, the main guy on the scene. This is while things are breaking out across the earth, but Arabs are going to be, uh, uh, Muslim is going to be taking the rule. And persecution begins. What is this persecution? This isn't only the persecution connected to Luke 24, uh, uh, sorry, to Luke's discourse in 21, where the persecution starts. This is also represented as the first portion of Mark's discourse. Okay, watch this. In Mark's discourse, you see it right here. Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. These are all the beginnings of sorrows, right? All of this right here, we've taught on it many times, is the first two and a half years of tribulation with World War III. And what is it saying that you should do during this time? Okay, not necessarily after this time. Oh, you can say all throughout this time. But during this time, you need to what? But take heed to yourselves. Who do we know is a worker group that's working this time? They're the disciples, the ones that were the anointed, the 120. Okay, the, the typology of the 120. This disciple worker group, they're also represented as being here during this time. They're the ones waking people up. They're the ones directing people and saving people and, and, and bringing about this great revival with the apostles. So look at what it says. In Daniel, <coughs> when, the, when the 14 years begins and it goes nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, what do we know happens at that time? But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils. And in the synagogues, ye shall be beaten. And all brought before rulers and kings for my, for my sake, for my testimony against them. You see, what was the typology in Daniel's day? Daniel was brought to the lion's den. The persecution began. What do we know? When this persecution starts, what do we know has also happened? I'll show you. In Luke chapter 21... Remember, how does when the 50 days comes to an end, what happens? Jerusalem is destroyed. The Jews are massive amounts of death. Many are taken captive. And many others have fled to the mountains. Okay? This is exactly. So Luke's discourse is about that 50, 40 days portion of time before the 14 years begins. And what do we know? Okay. In Luke's, it says, you know, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. But he, Luke's is the one that says, but before all these. So before all those things happen, they're going to what? 
they're going to deliver you up. So there's going to be craziness going on during the 40 days as well. But it's going to carry forward with this group into seals and against others who call out to Christ during that time. You'll be betrayed by both parents and brethren and kinfolk and friends. And some of you, they shall cause to be put to death. You're going to want to remember that. And it says, you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But don't worry, not a hair of your head shall be hurt. And what is he doing during the 40 days of the Son of Man? He's warning as Jonah did. In Luke 21, 20, it says, And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof, thereof is nigh. Let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst depart out, and let not them that be in the countries enter here into. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Okay? Listen to what it says. But woe unto them that are with child. So it means there's still kids in that time. And to them that give suck. So it means there's even little babies at that time. In those days. Okay? So a lot of people wonder, it was a question brought up in the forum again today. <clears throat> are all babies going to get to go? No. The scriptures are clear. We think, oh, well, that's not really right. I thought the Lord loves everyone. Yeah, but doesn't he love your 100-year-old grandma or great-grandpa just as much as he loves a newborn baby? Of course he does. Right? Of course he does. But they're in the flesh, so it was on their parents. If both of their parents are, are Muslims or Buddhists or atheists, that child is not saved. One parent needs to be saved for that child to be saved according to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. All right. And this is where you see it. I don't like to harp on it, but you see it, it, it's right here. A lot of people try to say, oh, well, this relates to another portion from something. No, it says, but woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. In what days? When Jerusalem is about to be compassed about, surrounded and then destroyed. The pre-trib escape already happened. You see, so what's he warning about? Jerusalem is going to be surrounded and destroyed. We know that that's going to happen after what? After the 120, right? The typology in Acts 1 into 2, when the disciples are going to be anointed by the Holy Ghost. And then what happens? Bam! Jerusalem is destroyed. It's destroyed. They fled. They've been getting warning. They were being warning by the Son of Man for 40 days. And then three days, the compassing about, and then the destruction takes place. So, what do we know at this point? When they're destroyed, some will have fled. I always pray every night in my prayers that the majority, the vast majority would flee to the mountains. That they would heed the warning of the Son of Man and flee to the mountains. But I know scripturally, many will die and that many will be taken captive. So my prayer is always that even in the Lord's anger and in his wrath for their disobedience, he would still have his mercy, right? He even tells us that he, he, he won't listen and he's not going to listen to them. He's not going to do that. But we read in other scriptures where it says, but his arm is stretched out still. So my prayer is that they would be allowed to in their spirits and that they would cry out in full repentance and turn to him in obedience that they would be given the understanding of knowing it's the end of days, that it would strengthen them, that it would encourage them to know that in the midst of their captivity or in the midst of their survival in the wilderness, that when this time is over, not decades, not generations from now, but when these few years, several years of the end of days are over, they will be once and forever with Yeshua, Messiah and the Father and their promise will happen. All right? So we know this is going to happen. So again, when does this happen? At the end of 50, which is connected to what? The Medes and the Persians. So Jerusalem's been attacked and destroyed. Just like in Jeremiah, and right? With Jeremiah, and many are taken captive. You see? What happens when many are taken captive? Some fled to the wilderness. Some were taken into captivity. And others were killed. Well, Let's follow the storyline. Let's go back into Daniel chapter 6. 
We see the typology of 120. We see a decree being made with the Medes and the Persians not to be able to worship any, but any god, right? And we see that for doing it, persecution is coming upon this group, just as it was for Daniel being thrown into the lion's den. Well, check this out. In Daniel 6, verse 13, it says, Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, listen to this, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah. Hello. What do you think that's telling you? I, I don't even have to explain, all right? Which is of the children of the captivity of Judah. Of Israel? Of the house of Israel? No. Of Judah. When do we know this happens? At the point of when destruction comes, when it will begin at the end of 50 days. Some fled to the mountains, many have been, have been killed, and many are taken captive. He's, a, he's another prophet typology as it was with Jeremiah. This is why what was and what is shall be. The typologies are rampant, right? And we see the same thing, right? Because it was what? <coughs> Cyrus. Well, who are the Medes and the Persians? Darius and Cyrus. You see, they're each ruling in their portion during this time. And in fact, it's Cyrus from those taken captive. It's Cyrus that makes this decree to allow them to go back and to rebuild. And we know a group will be brought back. And during the time of seals, only the foundation will be laid. Right? Only the foundation for the temple will be laid and everything else is going to be at rest. It's all here. It's all here. Let's keep going. Let's go into uh, Daniel 6, verse 14. Then the king, when he had heard it, was sore displeased with himself. See, because he didn't want to do this to Daniel, right? Remember, even in Jeremiah, he sides, he's, he's with Jeremiah and says, well, hey, are you lead them. You take this group back. Right? They're not... They're not um, attacking these prophets. And then it says, uh, it said according to the law of the Medes, and it was decreed. And then, of course, Daniel had to go to the lion's den. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, let's see. Oh, and then, of course, yes, Daniel is saved from it. Just like we know, when this, perse when this persecution begins, not everybody is going to be killed, right? Not everybody's going to be killed. So we have this typology here. Daniel's being saved. We know Jeremiah was saved in a different way that he could lead these people. And you see the enemies uh, that tried to accuse him being brought. You see, what's happening during the end of days is, of course, the battle of good and evil. There's going to be wars breaking out all over the earth, in cities, in communities, with neighbors, with nations, with governments. But there are going to be those leading the way, or in this case, in Scripture, this is talking about a, a particular section of the earth where this is beginning and where this is taking place. Let's see. <clears throat> uh, da, 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 da. What about verse, then Darius wrote unto all nations, languages. Okay, Daniel 6, verse 25 to the end. Then King Darius wrote unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. See, there, there's going to be this, this peace, right? This, hey, time to settle everything down that's going to take place. I make a decree that everyone, uh, uh, that in every kingdom of my dominion, uh, da, 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 uh, verse 26, the last part in his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed in his dominion, shall be unto the end verse 27 he delivereth and rescueth and he worketh his signs and wonders in heaven and in the earth who hath delivered daniel from the power of the lions verse 28 now listen to this so this daniel prospered in the reign of darius and in the reign of cyrus the persian you see this is exactly what we were saying because we know this is going to be the main power group at the beginning of the 14 years 
when Babylon, which means if if Media Persia, whoever, however this is to be represented in the end of days, it means that it would, I should say, it would appear that America must be greatly destroyed. That wherever the power and the military and might is, must be very, very dwindled. Which is why it would lead everybody to believe, and I would, I would kind of agree with it, that Babylon is going to be somewhere that great city in America. So it may even be where the, where the everything is run from in Washington and through parts of the East Coast that's destroyed, and that was Babylon in relation to that great city. Because if you're having Jerusalem destroyed, the Jews scattered, some taken captive, and then you've got the Medes and the Persians ruling in that in that area. Well, then where on earth are the Americans to come and defend Jerusalem? You would say, oh, well, you know, you got Biden doesn't really care, right? The, the left doesn't really care about Jerusalem, really. Well, you know, yes and no, right? It seems definitely more so no. But for them not to go in and not to step in at all. And all the military and those that do side with supporting Jerusalem, there must be great devastation that took place. And maybe a lot more attention needs to be paid at home. And at home, there's what? Nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, what? Neighbor against neighbor, city against city. All the power structure, the government structure is going to be decimated. It's going to be chaos in America and in the West. That would probably explain how these guys are going to take rule at that point. So now we're seeing this in relation to what we were talking about with the, the image in Nebuchadnezzar's dream, right? So when we see this, we also know now going into Daniel 7 that you're getting it from another perspective even though the other one was the image of nebuchadnezzar's dream when you come to daniel 7 and then go into daniel 8 you're seeing it in a completely different vision this one is of the four beasts you see and what do we know about these four beasts well the first is a lion who's the lion the lion is representative of assad Right? I'm convinced it's, well, I'm not, I'm not even convinced. The scriptures tell us that it's Syria that comes with a small army, encompasses Jerusalem, and they're all, they're all uh, um, showboat, if you will, or, or prideful, I should say, that nobody can destroy them because they've got the greater army. But we know in Second Chronicles 24, they're going to come with a smaller army, and they're going to destroy them because the Jews have been disobedient. And the Lord needs to remove them from the land so the land could be at rest before the temple is built on it. All right? When does this happen? When does this one happen? The 50 days. So you're seeing the same typology as what? Media and Persia. Right? The Medes and the Persians. It's the same typology of the timing of the lion with this attack on Jerusalem. We're now seeing it not from the image of, of Nebuchadnezzar's image, dream, but now we're seeing it from another vision that Daniel has in relation to the four beasts. What were the four beasts over there? It was, it was the, the metals. It didn't really start with the, it didn't start with the head of gold. That was Nebuchadnezzar that was gone early. It's the four that come after it. And so what are we seeing? Here's the lion, which we know is Assad, right? Assad, Bashar al-Assad. Their last name used to mean beast. Their father, grandfather, when he got into government and leadership, they changed it from beast to mean lion. That's what Assad is, okay? So it's pretty wild. The second one is a bear. We all know that's World War III taken out. This is with Russia. The leopard is Europe where the control center, where the dominion and the, the control of this world government and everything during World War III is going to take place. And I believe it's probably Germany, but, uh, uh, you know, up in that area and the control of it. And then what do you have? 
the fourth beast. Oh, what did the fourth beast represent over in Daniel 2? The one with ten toes. And when, when the Lord comes as the, as, as the mountain carved without hand and becomes a great mountain, but it's going to crush the toes, what do we see here? This case, the fourth beast, is the exact same wording we saw in Daniel chapter 2. In verse 7, it says, After this I saw in the night vision, and behold, the a fourth beast, um, uh, fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth, and it devoured and break in pieces. Remember that? And stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the other beasts before it, and it had ten horns. So we have one that had ten horns. We have one that had uh, one that had ten toes. We got one that has ten horns. And what is he going to do? He's going to do his little thing and speak and do all these things, right? Until what? Until the Ancient of Days comes. When does the Ancient of Days come? At the end of six years of seals. This is him coming as the stone carved without hand. This is him coming, hide us from the face of him who, who is coming. It's all the same story. It's just different pictures. So when people would read this, they would think, well, if this is, I beheld till uh, the thrones were cast down and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head was pure wool, his throne was like a fiery flame and his wheels a burning fire. You see, when you're reading this or when seven-year people are reading this, they would say, see, this really looks like the end of six years or the end of the, the time of seals when the Lord is coming and that's the end of tribulation. But it's not. It's not. It's only coming to the end of seals. This is why when you, when you hear people teaching on seven years, you hear the 42 months combined with the 1260 days. When they're clearly separate, but the only way to understand it is in 14 years. Or you'll hear them combine the 1260 and the time and times and half a time. But they're not. They're separate. Most people will combine the 42 months and the 1260 days to say, oh, well, they mean the same thing. Well, then why don't you do it with the time and times and half a time? Oh, well, that means something different. Why? <laughs> do you think maybe there's a reason one said 42 months, one said 1260, and one says time and times and half a time? Of course there is, because there are three different periods of time. We'll talk about that towards the end. So here we see the Lord coming just in the same typology as the stones throw, right? Or as the, as the mountain carved without hand. This is the same type of thing. This one is much more relatable to the end of the sixth seal. Because the sixth seal says, um, uh, hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb, right? Comma, and from the lamb for the great time of his wrath has come. And what do you see? The ancient of days. This is the father. And listen to what it says. Um, you see the 10,000, 10,000 stood before him. Uh, thousands of thousands ministered unto him, and 10,000, 10,000 stood before him. This is all the pre-trib group. The judgment was set, and the books were open. I beheld then, because of the voice of the great words, which the horn spake, and I beheld till the beast was slain, and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, and their lives were prolonged for a season and time. Well, we all know what that means. We've talked on it many times, right? This is that fourth beast. This is that antichrist. He's the one that speaks great words, okay? Always speaking, always speaking, always speaking blasphemy. And he's destroyed, right? He's destroyed. The 10 kings, right? The 10 toes or the 10 horns. These guys, their, their kingdoms and everything are destroyed and their dominions are taken away, but they still get to continue for a season and time, okay? Verse 13 of Daniel 7. And I saw in the night vision, behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him, and there was given unto him dominion and glory and a kingdom and all people uh, uh, that all people and nations and tongues should serve him. Okay? When we take this into the discourses, 
that would put us in uh, Mark's discourse. And look at what we see. There's your nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. This is the first two and a half years of seals until the time when there's going to be an abomination of desolation that comes. That's when the Antichrist will show up, which is why you see false Christ and false prophets here. And look what happens. We'll get to the abomination of desolation in a little bit as we go forward. But you see, you got an abomination of desolation in Mark. And we've taught on this many times that this one, standing where it ought not. This could also mean to place where it ought not. Okay? Abiding, placed where it ought not. Because why? Well, because there was no temple. There's no temple that's going to be built during seals. So what's this talking about? Right? Again, we've taught on it many times. It's the flesh. We are the portable temple. Even during the time of seals, it's still the time of the world. It's still the time of the Gentiles till their time ends at the end of seals. This is the physical tent covered in flesh that moves around, which is the body. Okay? And what do you see? Antichrist, right? It's going to be a time worse than ever. And then you got false Christ and false prophet because this is when that fourth beast will come into the picture. This is the one that when the Lord returns will destroy this false Christ, this beast. But the false prophet doesn't get destroyed, right? Power and their authority and so forth is taken away. But out of all the leadership, only the false Christ, right? The Antichrist is killed. And look at what it says, okay? Immediately, look at this. There it is, all of this time, the Antichrist got to rule and reign. We know this period of time plays out for 42 months. And look what happens. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun shall be dark and the moon shall not give her light and the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And listen to this. And then shall they see the son of man coming in the clouds that's exactly what you're seeing in daniel 7. this is taking to taking you to the end of the sixth year of seals and in that time of the seventh year of seals when when things settle down and are at rest okay you get the interpretation Four great beasts or four kings, uh, but the saints, there we go. Verse 18, but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess it, the kingdom forever and ever and ever. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was exceedingly dreadful, whose iron and brass, uh, um, uh, uh, iron and his nails of brass, which devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with his feet. You know, it's pretty wild when you when you look into some of these stories and and you follow it along because you realize that this, this period of time when these things are taking place, that Satan is, there's some sort of authority still going on with Satan, with the devil. And, and you see it even in Revelation chapter 12, before the end of seals. You see, this is why you're going to see things like where, where the Antichrist gets that power to continue 42 months, He's given the power by the dragon, which means at about mid seals, there's going to it, it, it's pretty crazy when you see this, this more dreadful and exceedingly. I mean, you think of the Antichrist and you think, well, how is this Antichrist Mahdi going to be so much more dreadful? How is he going to have this power and ability to do this craziness beyond anything that the world has ever experienced to this time? It's hard to it's hard to really fathom and play and put together. It makes you wonder if something is going to be seen coming from above at this point, right? I don't know that there will. I'm not saying there will, but you see this period of time even in Revelation chapter 12. Okay, in Revelation chapter 12, when he gets power or before he gets this power, look at this. Revelation 12:13. We're going to talk about two a little bit more. But in verse 3, it says, Then there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. See, there it is. Seven heads and ten horns. Right? And ten horns. He's the one giving the power to the Antichrist, to the beast. 
And this is happening, what? About the middle, right? About two and a half, three years time frame when Antichrist is going to get his power to continue 42 months. He drew a third part of the stars. You're going to see as we talk about this, but this is all before the rapture. So this is somewhere in the midst of seals. When you go to Revelation 13, you're seeing the same thing with the beast, right? His 10 horns. Uh, we see it's the beast. And right here in verse two, and the beast, which I saw was like unto a leopard. So now what does he have? He has the authority of the leopard. He has uh, the feet of the bear. So he's got the military of the bear and he's got the mouth of the lion. So the, the Assad being the mouth. And what does it say? And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Is, is it just China? Is, is that where this power and this authority, and that's why it's going to be so dreadful, because China's going to be in the, mix with the, with, in the mix with the Muslims? Could very well be, right? Could very well be. But when we go to Revelation 12, in the same time frame, we're seeing that there's something in the heavens that are going to appear at that point. You see what I'm saying? So what is it? What is going to freak people out like this, right? What are they going to see that's going to be such a great wonder in heaven? The timing of it is the exact same timing of the beast, of that fourth beast, getting that power and authority and so forth, which is why in Daniel 13, you see that he's got, he takes all the authority. So it's going to start with Assad. It's going to then grow to, to um, uh, 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 Russia and all of this World War III breaking out. It's going to be the system of the one world government and everything through the leopard. But when the fourth beast comes, who is going to be greater than all of them, is going to take their power of all of them, is going to be in his control. Until what? Bam. Until his 42 months are up. Okay? That's why you see it. In, in Revelation 12, uh, 13, you see, and he was given power to continue 42 months. Not 1260 days, 42 months. So if we know the timing of his power is before the rapture, then it's also before the 1260 days, because clearly the 1260 days in Revelation chapter 12, come after the was caught up rapture, which is during the seventh year of seals. Hello. Okay. So we see this in the interpretation. Da, 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 had very mouth, very big mouth. Daniel 7, verse 21. Um, well, in verse 20, we see, you know, he speaks very great things. He was more stout. So there's going to be a man, of course. Verse 21. I beheld in the same horn, made war with the saints. Again, Revelation chapter 13. And prevailed against them. Revelation 13. Until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints should possess the kingdom. Exactly. Great multitude rapture at this point. Thus, said, uh, thus he said, the fourth beast, shall be the fourth kingdom on the earth, shall devour and tread it down again. See, and tread it down. Watch this. If you go to Revelation chapter 9. No, chapter 11. I always mix those two up for some reason. You see, listen to what it says. Okay, rise and measure the temple. This is the body. Uh, 11 two, but the court which is without. Okay. He's, he's not talking about measuring the court. He's, he's not caring about your body. He's not talking about, you, uh, about a physical temple. He's talking about the temple of the body, the flesh, okay? Don't measure the court that is without. Leave it, okay? And measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot. 42 months. So again... It's about destroying the Gentiles. It's about crushing the, uh, the, the, the church, the, the Gentiles, the non-believer portion, and they're being tread down, okay? The Christians are being killed, and they're being tread underfoot for 42 months. So see, they're what? They're being tread underfoot 
trampled for 42 months. You go to Revelation 13, and we know how long this fourth beast, who has power over the other three, how long is he going to have this power for? 42 months. What is he going to do? He's blasphemy speaking, just like the other one in Daniel 7. He's making war against the saints and will overcome them, like Daniel chapter 7. You see? And he's treading them underfoot. Well, this said that he's getting power for 42 months to continue. Back in Daniel 7, it says that he's what? It says that he's going to tread them underfoot, right? He's going to stamp the residue. See, stamp. I think it even goes to trample. Okay, look at this. Stamp also goes to trample. So he's going to what? Stamp or trample them under feet. How long is he going to do it before the Ancient of Days comes? 42 months. You see? This is what we're being told here. See, he speaks very great things, shall overcome the saints until the Ancient of Days comes. The Ancient of Days brings in the rapture group. This fourth beast shall devour the whole earth, shall tread it down. Okay, there it is again. To trample. Oh, surprise, right? And what? Break it to pieces. There it is again. The same one. And the ten horns out of his kingdom are ten kings. That shall rise up in another more diverse and shall speak great words and wear out the saints in time to change the times and laws until what? Until a time and times and the dividing of time. What a lot of people think this means is they think it still means the same thing as um revelation chapter 12 but it doesn't here's the timeline chart for those that wanted uh our brother uh michael in australia asked i did update it and you'll find it in the description box under the video it's updated but you see what you're going to find out is there's your 42 months right the the about second half right two and a half years then three and a half years is the 42 months to the end of the sixth seal the Lord comes at the end of the sixth seal. The 144,000 are sealed. Sometime about the middle time frame of the seventh year of seals, the rapture of the great multitude happens. <coughs> and then what do you have? Well, then you've got, so you had what? You had your 42 months. You have your 1260. Okay. And then you've got your time and times and half a time. You see, it's all in that portion. So when you see this dividing a time, a lot of people will say, again, because they only see seven years, they'll say, oh, well, that ties in with the time and times and half a time. No, it doesn't. The difference is right here. It's the end of seals. He's going to rule till the end of the sixth seal, right, for his 42 months, when his time is over. And the Lord has come on heavenly Mount Zion, the mountain carved without hand that strikes the ten toes, that, that strikes the ten horns, that destroys the Antichrist, and the others have their dominions taken away. <coughs> His time only goes to the time and time and dividing of time. Why? Because the time of the Gentiles is over. It's over. It is the dividing of time. The age of the Gentiles is over. And it will now turn back to the time of the Jews. It's over. When the seals are done, the time of the Gentiles is complete. And it will turn back to the time of Judah. Okay? And his judgment shall sit, and he shall take uh, away his dominion and consume and destroy it. Okay, to this is the end of the matter. And what do we know about Daniel? Daniel didn't understand, right? He had trouble understanding in these things because he was giving us a vision and prophecy for the end. This one is just, this one in chapter seven has become just so straightforward for us to follow and understand. It's, it's incredible. But what a lot of people do is they, they'll say, well, see, okay, there's clear. The Lord's coming at the end. That's the end of seals. That's the Antichrist rule. That's it. No, it's not. No, it's not, because by the time you get to Revelation chapter 12, you're seeing a completely different story taking place. And the timeline and the count and everything, it's completely different. 
Let's go to Daniel chapter 8. In Daniel chapter 8, look at that. In the third year of the reign of Belshazzar, look at what we see. He goes on to explain now, okay? When you read this, of course, you'd say, well, it is tough to understand because it can be very tough to understand, right? You've got the ram, you've got the two horns, you've got the other one pushing against them, and you've got this battle taken back and forth. And it says, uh, cast down to the ground and stamped upon them. What you really need is to be able to understand. Um, uh, you need an explanation, right? So a good thing he gives us Gabriel to help us understand it. But you're going to see things along the way, even before the explanation from Gabriel. And it comes here in Daniel chapter 8, verse 10. It says, now this is the one that waxed great, okay? Even to the host of heaven. Listen to this. And it waxed great, even to the host of heaven. And it cast down some of the host and the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Wasn't that interesting? Where did we see this happening before the end of the six years of seals? We saw it in Revelation chapter, whoops, Revelation chapter 12. Remember this? Revelation chapter 12. This is about, right in here, is right about the time of about two and a half years or so since the 14 years began. We'll cover more of this in a little bit. Remember verse 3? Daniel, uh, Revelation 12, verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon with uh, seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Verse 3. And his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. There it is. There it is. Right there, again, showing this time as another typology to the time in seals. And when you see the explanation, you're going to get it. You're going to totally see it because he tells you who they are. So it was cast down the ground and he did magnify himself to the prince of the host. And by him, the daily sacrifice was taken away. Who's the daily sacrifice in this case? It's the believers. Okay? It's the believers. What is this daily sacrifice? It brings us right back to, Ma to Mark chapter 13 again. A lot of you guys are probably thinking, oh my goodness, when is this going to get even to Matthew? You see, there's so much detail given to the seven years of seals in the Mark portion because so much of the events are taking place. By the time you get to trumpets, the Lord is there. You see? The Lord is there. All of that enemy destruction, all that world war, all that stuff is done. The Lord is on heavenly Mount Zion. <clears throat> the rapture of a billion plus people are gone to, to paradise. In Mark 13, this is what it's talking about. It's the time of the abomination of desolation. What does he do? He's trampling them underfoot. Right? He's destroying them. This is the daily sacrifice that he's talking about here in Daniel chapter 8 that he's taken away. It's not, the, it's not the temple rebuilt, and we can prove it by the words that follow, okay? Um, by him, the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the place of his sanctuary cast down. You see? To cast down. It's, it's, to, it's to break it, to pluck it, to hurl it, right? To throw it down. This is the same thing we were reading in Revelation chapter 11. Don't worry about the outer court, you see? It's going to be given to the Gentiles, right? The, the time of the Antichrist, the 42 months to trample underfoot. This is that daily sacrifice. This is <clears throat> when the Antichrist gets that power to continue. So let's keep going. Verse uh, 12. And a host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. And he cast down the truth to the ground and it, pra and it practiced and prospered. And you guys are going to love this. A lot of people love this question. Then I heard one saint speaking to another saint. No, I got to read this carefully because it always used to mess me up, but it's, it's pretty funny to hear. Then I heard one saint speaking and another saint said 
unto that certain saint, which spake, <laughs> right? Why, why did it have to be so complicated? Why not just say, one saint sent to another? <laughs> Said, how long shall the vision concerning the daily sacrifice, remember I just explained who the daily sacrifice was, and the transgression of desolation, okay? So how long is all of this going to take place from when this all breaks out at the start of the 14 years? How long is this going to take place? Okay. And the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary. Okay. Look at this. The saint. To give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden under foot. See? How long is all of this going to last? When this tribulation takes place and they start going after Christians and there's fleeing and everything, how long is this going to take before it's over? Verse 14. And he said unto me, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary, which is what? The saints be cleansed. To what? Make right to have to cleanse themselves for them to have been made clean isn't that amazing don't we know that that's the group from mark's um transfiguration story right the transfiguration this word for white the greek word 30 21 this is the lord coming typology after six days which is a typology of after six years and who is going to get to go to the mountain of the Lord? Those who made themselves white. These are those who had to go through the tribulation, the Mark group, this, the church that, wasn't, that was sleeping. They weren't fully in Christ. They weren't committed. They went through seals. Others left and new ones came in. <coughs> right? They had to make themselves white. And we can prove this, of course, by going to Revelation chapter 7, where the rapture of the great multitude is. And you see this word is only used twice. And look at what it says. Okay. Those who have white robes and palms in their hands. We've broken that down many times. It's so awesome. Listen to what it says. These are they who came through great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white. Clearly a picture of those who had to go through great tribulation or had to go through great tribulation to make their clothes white you see that so how long for this group how long was this persecution how long was this cleansing of the sanctuary and the body to be trampled upon before it was made right before they were cleansed and he tells them it will last 2300 days well check this out let me help you guys to understand this you see that <laughs> i've got all these tabs open and i'm telling you it's so crazy I, I i like i said i could just i could do this in my sleep it's so incredible to understand watch what he tells them okay he tells them 2300 days well watch this let me show you something we're talking about i think i put the 28 okay I'll even, I'll change it to the 26th, okay? We're talking about the 14 years beginning right here, okay? Just as everything we've explained here tonight early on, everything we've been teaching on the past, this 50 days that comes first, and then the 14 years, the whole nine yards. So if we take May 26th, 2023, and we add 23, May 26th, 2023, and add 2300 days to when this rapture group right when this time of the rapture group is going to come in when they're going to be brought in but what do we know they're going to come in but there's right the bearing of the bones the whole seven months all that stuff right but when their time is at hand and they could start to come it's going to be this period right they don't know that's why mark said their their sign of jonah they're not given one Right, the, the Luke group, there's the 40 days with the workers. The Matthew, it's three days and three nights, which is the end of the six years of trumpets. And Mark was told they were given nothing. And we know that after the battle of Ezekiel 39, 
when the Lord is there on Mount Zion coming, we know the 144,000 are going to be sealed first. Then the rapture of the great multitude that comes in what? Well, if we're 2023 and we, we count, watch this, before I show it to you, watch this. We've already got it on the chart. <clears throat> this isn't something I had to update. All I did was change the February, March to April, May, and the February or whatever it was in 2023 to April. Okay, that's the only little adjustment at the beginning. It's still going to be in spring that it all starts. So what do we see? The rapture of the great multitude will take place. Watch this. Okay, after the sixth seal in the seventh year, somewhere around, that's why I've got this little about approximately fall of 2029. Something we've understood, something we've taught on, we've known for a long time, which means what? From 23 to 24. So by by 2024, okay? By 2024, at Feast of Weeks in Taurus, that's year one complete. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So by 2029, Feast of Weeks, six years is done. The Lord has come down. He's destroyed the enemy. And we know sometime... <coughs> Around fall, approximately around fall, this group is coming in, right? They're coming in. It's, it's all starting to take place, which is in the midst of the seventh year. Well, let's see if we can calculate that based on exactly what he told us for the duration of this time would be. Okay? 2,300 days. From May 26, 2023, is September 11th, <laughs> pretty interesting, right? Is September 11th, 2029. Precisely the time frame that is in the charts that we've understood for years. <clears throat> the entire storyline that we teach and have taught on in the 14 years and how these things play out in Antichrist, 42 months and then 1260 and 1290 to be set up and then time and times and half a time in the first two and a half years are the are World War III and everything being established. Nothing has ever changed. It's only begin, it's only about where it would begin. That's it. That's it. Nothing besides that has changed. When it begins, all of this will be laid out. Whether it's this year, next year, 10 years from now. No, I'm not saying it's going to be that. Don't panic. Okay? We've revealed the truth of understanding 70. We've got it. I believe wholeheartedly. We've got it. Keep a, keep a little grain of salt for your sanity just in case. But we've shown the 70. We know it's about two and a half years. It's all about the beginning of tribulation. The beginning of sorrow is about two and a half years, 42 months, 1260, time and times and half a time. Okay? So isn't that amazing? Right in the wheelhouse that the revelation has proved. Because what did it say? What did it say? How long for what? The sanctuary to be cleansed. And who are the sanctuary? They are the saints for them to be made white. You see that? Then you get the interpretation of the vision. Why is the interpretation of the vision by Gabriel important? I'm going to tell you right here. In verse Daniel chapter 8, verse 19. And he said, Behold, I will make thee to know what shall be in the last end. What is it? The end of days. Okay. Of the indignation for the time, uh, for at the time appointed, the end shall be. Who is the ram that thou sawest having two horns there, the kings of? Bam. Media and Persia. Media and Persia. See that? Right there. You don't even need to read the rest of it. This is telling you exactly what we were showing from the image of Nebuchadnezzar's dream. This is during the 50 days in Jerusalem. Uh, uh, Israel attacked. Jerusalem then attacked and destroyed them, fleeing to the mountains, some being captured. Just like Daniel, he was a captive of Judah. And what do you have? The 14 years starts at the time of Media Persia. 
So if you calculate from the time of Media Persia to the question that was being asked, it's 2,300 days. And the 2,300 days are right in the time frame we have been revealing in this ministry over six years at a period within that seventh year when the rapture group starts to come in. Bam, right there. Okay? And then it says, and the rough goat is the king of Greece, and the horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Uh, Daniel 8, 23. And in the latter time, there it is again, of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance. See, here he comes. Here comes the fourth beast. Here comes, right? The final one and for the end of seals. This is the Antichrist. This is the beast. A fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. He shall destroy wonderfully. You see that? But not by his own power. Because it's not Satan. It's the Antichrist. It's the beast who's given power by the dragon. You see? And he shall destroy wonderfully. And shall, prosper and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. He shall magnify himself in his heart and, cross, um, and by peace destroy many. Now listen to this. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes. That is Yeshua. The prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Hello. Why don't we go back to 2nd Ezra's? There it is again. Okay? An innumerable multitude, right? There's the Ezekiel 39 battle. There is on Mount Zion. <coughs> and what does he do? He destroys them. And will destroy them without effort by the law, which is symbolized by the fire. And then you have the great multitude coming, which is the rapture. Over and over and over and over. All typologies to the end of days. See, this is the Ezekiel 39 one. This is the Antichrist being killed. What is this? This is, <clears throat> where is it? This is Daniel 7. Okay. This is Daniel 7. The exact same story right here. Here he comes. Antichrist, right? The beast was slain, his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. It's the exact same story. Okay, there it is, just in another form of the vision. And to understand when it starts is exactly as we have understood, Media and Persia. Showing and proving that the 2300 day count, you'll know. Could you imagine now being a worker? Well, guess what? Even if you're a worker in the coming end of days, you're part of that remnant bride worker group. There's no fear. Because your understanding is going to be given by the Lord. You're going to have understanding of all things. That's why I believe what's happening here in this ministry is a preparation. <clears throat> is a preparation for the Smyr Smyrna group. Is a preparation for the Luke 24 disciple workers. Is a preparation for the typology of the 120 disciples. It's so awesome. I told you guys, man, it's just going to be packed. We're only finishing chapter 8. And I was astonished. So Daniel 8, 27, listen to this. And I was astonished at the vision, but none understood it. Can't say that anymore, can you? We've been blessed with the revelation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's over the top. Okay, now watch this. Let me just do a little double check to say uh, to see that I'm staying at least somewhat on track here. Right, ladies, dwell, Mark 13, Second Ezra's. There's Daniel 9. I guess with the piece with Daniel 9, it's just to make a little point on this. Because we'll come back to Daniel 9 in a moment. Okay? Again, look at what you see in the first year of Darius. Okay? The what? The seed of the mean. Of the Medes, I mean. There it is again. So you've got what? The Medes and the Persians. So this is now throwing it back to the beginning again. Because Daniel 9 gives you the entire overview of the entire 14 years. 
And what does it say? That by the, the, by the Lord uh, of Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. There are plural desolations of Jerusalem coming during the end of days. So even though we talk about 70 years in many places, okay, in many places throughout scripture, being when they came into the land, had a government, right? New Year of Trees had a government and the Lord is counting from Taurus, is counting from the Feast of Weeks, which started then in 1949. You go four years, 49 to 50, that's one year complete, to 51, 52, 53. That's four years, three years uncircumcised, fourth year to the Lord, and from the fifth year forward began it being theirs, which means fifth year started. 54 is one. You get to 2023, 70 years are going to be done at Taurus this year at the Feast of Weeks, which is why the 14 years are going to begin. But we have the 50 days before that we know. I don't believe that this 70 years is that 70 years. Because this one is about what? The desolations of Jerusalem. They took over Jerusalem in 1967, which means the 70 years of Jerusalem will be complete in 2037. Do you think it's, it, it, it's by chance? <clears throat> Do you think it's by chance that the 14 years are done at the Feast of Weeks of 2037? Do you think that just so happens to be? Oh, I fixed this on this chart too. There wasn't much, but you see, you think it just so happens the last two sevens bring us to the end of the 49 weeks and then you have the final Jubilee that will begin at Taurus Feast of Weeks of 2037 because it ended 69 years begins, you see, at the Feast of Weeks 2036, and it ends at the Feast of Weeks 2037. So 69 begins in 36 and ends, which is the 70th for Jerusalem in uh, uh, Feast of Weeks 2037. Okay? 14 years is done at the Feast of Weeks 2037, 70 years of Jerusalem complete. Do you think that's by chance? Do you think that's by chance that when they come into the land four years, then they can count for themselves, but they were already with Jerusalem, then they get Jerusalem, and 70 years to Jerusalem equals the end of 14 years when all the desolations will have taken place over Jerusalem? Do you think it's just by chance? Do you think it's by chance that Daniel said, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. 70 weeks, 70 what? We talked about in the last video, Shabua. What does Shabua mean when you go look it up? Shabua means feast of weeks. Hello. So all of these things, <clears throat> everything we were just reading about, we don't need to spend much time in Daniel 9. We'll, we'll touch little parts here and there. But you see, all of these things so far and more that we're going to cover are still about what? The first seven years while they're removed. While they're removed. You see, listen to Daniel 9.25. Now that you've got a little bit more understanding of this decree being given, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem. Is this the decree that Darius gives? No, Darius is about the worshiping. You see? C Cyrus is the decree to allow them to go and rebuild. Who are the two at the beginning? The Darius type and the Cyrus type. Media and Persia, the beginning of the 14 years. So when Jerusalem is attacked and destroyed, you have one with a decree that had been given, right? And you have the other one, which is Cyrus, giving the decree to allow them to go back and rebuild. But what do we know? For the first seven weeks or seven years, which is 70 fe or seven feasts of weeks, 
they won't be rebuilding. It's going to be the time of the Gentiles. The only thing that's going to get done is when you read in Jeremiah and Ezra from this decree by Cyrus, the only thing that will get done in those seven years is the foundation. The foundation of the temple is the only thing that's going to get laid. Because the land must rest for the Lord. He will not rebuild the temple until the seven years of the land have rested. Those seven years are these seven weeks or 70 weeks of years as seven years of feasts of weeks. Or sorry, seven years of feast of weeks. It's incredible. And all of these things that we've been breaking down is all about these first seven years. And of course, it's going to begin also with a decree to allow them to rebuild. By who? Cyrus. Again, the image of the arms, the, the beginning of the 14 years, the silver. It's all there. It's the same story, guys. It's all being revealed all throughout it. Right? What is it even in Revelation 12? Okay? In Revelation chapter 12, where's the comparison? Uh, I guess Revelation 12, it, it was going to the time of the Lord. So in, in actually, in going back to, well, let me start here. So we see this third of the stars. We see this, the dragon type, right? Who is going to give power to the Antichrist, who's going to continue for 42 months. And then it's not till we see just like Daniel 7, when the father, when father God, when they come on heavenly Mount Zion and the son of man is brought to him. Here's the son, see, brought forth a man child who was to rule with a rod of iron. And then you have the rapture. Again, it's after it. Same with these other ones we've been showing. When we go back into Daniel chapter 9, we see that the Lord, we know that the Lord had come at the end of six years of seals, but the rebuilding of the temple and everything will not start until after these seven weeks of years or seven years of Feast of Weeks. And that's when you get the story of the rest of tribulation of trumpets. These are the seven years of seals. All of this is the seven years of trumpets. And everything so far covered was all about these seven weeks of years as seven years of seals. You see? And what's going to happen? When trumpets begins, the rebuilding of the city and the streets are going to begin, but Messiah is going to be there. This is why when we go to Zechariah chapter 8, <coughs> the father was there, right? The ancient of days, the son of man comes to him, dominion's going to be given. There's the father, he was jealous, now he's returned unto Jerusalem. It's the holy mountain of the Lord. And what does he tell them? Let your hands be strong. You in these days, right? Uh, you that here in these days, these words by the mouth of the prophets, which were in the day that the foundation of the house of the Lord of hosts was built, that the temple might be laid. Okay, now it's the time that the temple can be laid is what it's saying. It's saying because before these days, during those seven years, I said everybody against everybody, right? Neighbor against neighbor. There it is. Kingdom against kingdom. It was affliction. There was no rest for anybody. You see, but now I will not be unto the residue of this people as in the former days. See, who are the residue? Those who survived. I'm not going to be to them now as I've been these last seven years. The rebuilding's about to take place. It's just incredible. But you think we're going to the rebuilding yet? You think we're going to trumpets? You think that 10, 11, 12 is all about trumpets? Nope. <laughs> not yet. Not yet it's not. Let's go to chapter 10. You can prove it. Look at this. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia. <laughs> you see, that's important to know. Okay. In the third year of Cyrus, what does that mean? That means after two has been observed, but before he, the third year of his reign. 
which is that two to three year, when two years is complete to before three years is complete, that's in the third year, which is what? About two and a half years, right? And look at what it says, okay? We know he prayed and, and fasted and mourned three full weeks, and then listen to what we see. In verse 13, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, right? Those three weeks, that's why he couldn't come. And it says, but lo, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me and remained there with me and remained there with the kings of Persia. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in, there it is again, the latter days, okay? Literally the end of days. Uh, similitude to the sons of men. Uh, let me come down. Because remember, he, he's freaking out and all this, right? He, he couldn't speak. The angel has to touch him and, and have him to, to stand upon his feet. Uh, let's start in verse 18, just so you get a little bit of the context there. Daniel 10, verse 18. Then there came, uh, sorry. Then there came again and touched me one like the appearance of a man and he strengthened me and said, O oh man, greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be upon thee. Be strong. Yea, be strong. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. And then he tells them. Then said he, Knowest thou there, uh, wherefore I come unto thee? And now will I return to fight against the prince of Persia. Okay? It's, it's, the, it's the principalities behind them. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grisa shall come. Okay? Look at that. Also a place of Arabia. Okay? I believe this relates to MBS. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael, your prince. Okay? Remember, Michael is the one over this portion with Judah and that's going to oversee this when it comes to the time of trumpets. You're going to see him again. Now let's go. So what are we seeing? It's the third year. We're seeing Persia. We're seeing Grisha. Okay? Again, right in the midst of the time of seals. It's right in the midst of the time of seals. Let me make sure I'm staying on track, okay? So in this time of seals, why do I have Daniel 8 again? Yeah, when he magnifies and casts down the host. So at this point, we know this is when this, this two and a half years approximately time is taking place. So if we go to Revelation chapter 12, we'll see this a little bit more as we go forward. It's again talking right in this period of this power, of this taking place. How do we know? Well, we know that this great wonder, this Revelation 12 sign, 12 1, yes, we were given a, a, a pre lib to get people watching in 2017, but the actual is going to be this, I believe it's going to be the stone's throw. Not not the son of man, not the stone's throw at the end of the sixth seal, okay? Not the one crushing the toes and all of that. Because you can see, the ten horns haven't even come yet. This is that pre-trib, son of man is a stone's throw away type of thing, okay? I believe the escape, and I've been saying this for five years, comes between the end of verse 1 and the start of verse 2 of Revelation 12. Which means most likely we're going to see this stone's throw when the Son of Man says, I'm a stone's throw away, okay? But it won't hit before the escape. The escape will happen before it hits. And it says in verse 2, And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered, okay? So before the travailing in birth and pained to be delivered, this escape of the pre-trib bride is going to take place. The travailing and birth are representative as, of the 40 days of the Son of Man. We'll get to it later. And it says, comma, and pained to be delivered. This word right here, pained, 
to be delivered. This one word is the first two and a half years of seals. It rep excuse me, it represents the two and a half years of World War III before what? The next sign comes when the Antichrist gets his power to continue 42 months. Okay? We'll we'll cover that in a bit. But this is the timing. You see, the time when when Cyrus is in his third year, it's in the midst, okay? It's, or I should say, it's when this is coming to an end. It's when this portion here is coming to an end. And now, the Antichrist is about to receive his power. <clears throat> okay, not right away, but he's about to. That's why if it's the third year of Cyrus, it's sometime between the beginning of the third year and when the third year is complete, which is about two and a half years if you go about the middle of it. Okay? That's also this period right here. So now let's go to Daniel 11. You would think by Daniel 11, my goodness, we got to be talking about trumpets now. <laughs> nope. How about this? In the first year of Darius the Mede. Are you kidding me? <clears throat> you see? In the first year of Darius the Mede, he's made known these things, right? I stood to confirm and strengthen him. Verse 2. And now I will show thee the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer than they all, and he shall stir up all against the realm of Grisha. Okay? So now we're coming to the midpoint of seals. One shall stand up in the end of years, okay? <clears throat> shall join themselves, shall make an agreement. This is all another view of what is taking place during the time of seals just like nebuchadnezzar's vision just like daniel and and the vision of uh, uh, uh of the lion the 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 bear the leopard and the fourth beast this is another like the uh, uh the rams and the and so forth this is now another explanation in talking about it with worldly events, with ships and people and so forth, not represented now as rams or uh, body parts and so forth, all right? Or animals. This is now events that would be taking place. Talks about a branch in her estate. I don't want to go into all of it. There's a lot here, and it's not all easy to understand. Uh, let's go into Daniel 11, verse 11. And the king of the south shall be moved with collar and shall come forth to fight with him, even with the king of the north. And he shall set forth a great multitude, but the multitude shall be given into his hand. Here it comes. And when he hath taken away the multitude, his heart shall be lifted up, and he shall cast down many ten thousands. Again, another representation of a group of the great multitude. Um, and he shall not be strengthened by it, uh, verse 13, halfway through, and shall certainly come after certain days, uh, after certain years, with a great army, with much riches, <coughs> and in those times the king of the style shall stand, okay, a lot of detail that we're not going into, because it's, it's stuff that, that are actually going to be events taking place, okay, not, not images, but actual events. And it says, uh, which is in his hand shall be consumed. Okay, let's go to verse 20. Daniel 11, verse 20. It says, then shall stand up in his estate a raiser of taxes in the glory of the kingdom. But within a few days he shall be destroyed, neither in anger nor in battle. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom. But he shall come in, just like the other ones were saying, peaceably, and shall obtain the kingdom by flatteries, and with his arm and with the arms of a flood, <coughs> they shall be overflown before him, and shall be broken, yea, also the prince of the covenant. Remember, they had made these agreements, right? And after the league made with him, shall he work deceitfully, for he shall come up 
and shall become strong with a small people. He shall enter peaceably upon the fattest places of the province. Okay. Um, he shall scatter among them the prey and the spoil and the riches. Yea, and he shall forecast his devices. Okay, he's come with a great army. It's just all of this time with him being set up. Okay. Verse 27, towards the end, it says, For yet the end shall be for a time appointed. Now we get to <clears throat> verse 29. At the time appointed, he shall return and come toward the south, and it shall not be as the former or as the latter. The ships of Chittim, the company, he shall have intelligence with them and shall forsake the holy covenant. Verse 31. And arms shall stand on his part, and they shall, here he is. They shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the daily sacrifice. Hello. There it is again. And shall take away the daily sacrifice. Okay. And they shall place the abomination of desolation. How can we prove which one this is? Okay. This is again the Mark 13. There are two abominations of desolations. Remember this, this taking away that takes place? Is this one right here. This is the abomination of desolation in Mark, which is about the physical temple where God still dwells within man. This is during the time of seals. This is still the time of the age of the Gentiles. This is his power getting that 42 months and the abomination of desolation that's going to take place. And that's why in Mark's discourse, it says, now this is going to be a time worse than it's ever been. And now you get the false Christs and false prophet. This is the time when the Antichrist and the false prophet, this is the Revelation 13 when this time begins to take place. Again, in another picture, but not in a statue imagery, not in animals, okay? Not in, 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 in another group of animals, but now in physical battles and nations and so forth in this area taking over this power so listen to what it says again we'll be able to prove out this period of time being the abomination that of desolation that re, that is uh the portion of seals and not of trumpets listen to what he says uh in verse 32 and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt with flatteries, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Now listen to this. Daniel 11, verse 33. They that understand. See that? They that understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword and flame by captivity and by spoil many days. We know a group, right? We know a group who's being given understanding to work during seals, who, is going to, who are going to instruct. How about that? Who are going to instruct. That's pretty wild, isn't it? Because there's a group being given understanding who's growing in understanding now, who, who are going to instruct many. Yet they're also going to fall by the sword and flame in captivity. Okay, these are the seals workers. Now when they, when they shall fall, Daniel eleven thirty four. 34. Now when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with little help, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. And some of them of understanding, wait a second, doesn't that sound familiar? Doesn't that sound like the same group from Luke chapter 21? The sum of them of understanding, <clears throat> right? Or the sum of them, where are we? There it is. Shall be betrayed by brother and kinfolk, and some of you they shall cause to be put to death. Well, what if you go to Revelation chapter 2? You guys know this very well. You go to Revelation chapter 2, and look at what we read. The church of Smyrna, right? Tribulation and poverty. They that are Jews, which are of the synagogue of Satan, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, 
the devil shall cast some of you. Same again. Daniel, Luke, Revelation, all the same period of time to the three groups, to, to the same group of people. And they're all represented as the Luke remnant bride workers who are the ones that are given understanding. And I told you, I'm going to prove to you the timing. You see that? How is the devil sending some of them into prison? Well, we already showed it, didn't you? In Revelation chapter 12, we showed when the devil is going to be given the power, when the dragon is going to give that power to him. You see? And the great red dragon gave power <coughs> and his seat and authority. And this is when he's going to be what? He's going to continue. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> this is when he's going to continue for 42 months. Right? He's going to continue for 42 months. See, the one speaking great things and blasphemies. And he makes war against the saints. So you see, there's the dragon. The dragon is called the, the devil, right? As well, in Revelation 12. So you can see that this group in Revelation chapter 2 are the sum of you. Okay, they represent the workers during Smyrna. These, these were the ones with Christ for 40 days. They received the anointing as the typology of the 120, and they're working during seals. We can see that this period of time that the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that's those working for the devil. This is during the time of seals. <clears throat> okay, but we can prove it more because who are these some of you? You guys all know this. The some of you from Luke chapter 24 are the ones that he says he gives understanding to, remember? These are the disciples that followed him for 40 days. They're the ones, the anointing. And what does he do? He opened unto them their understanding. Do you know that this word for understanding only happens once in all of the Gospels? And you're like, wait, it happens 24 times. I said the Gospels. Watch this. It only happens once in the Gospels. Luke chapter 24, 45. Out of all the Gospels, out of all the worker groups, it's only Luke's group who are given the understanding, who are those who some of you, who are represented by Smyrna, hello. And look at when you go to Revelation, it's only used in two places, and there it is. What is the time of seals? What is the time of seals in Revelation chapter 13, proving that this group of understanding, who are Smyrna, who are the ones who are the sum of you, who are the ones being cast during mid-seals by the devil into prison, those working for them, they are the ones who are what? Who are given understanding, you see? Here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding. Who are the ones that will have the understanding? the seals workers, those being prepared, those who will have their understanding opened unto them in the revelation of the end of days. This is why I say this ministry is the preparation. We will be ready for this is to come. Listen to what it goes on to say. Okay? So we know this is again the time of the abomination during seals. <clears throat> because them of understanding, it is some of them of understanding, shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white. You see, these ones aren't being made white like the other one says. These ones are the ones who are white because these are the workers. These workers were already made white in Christ. Even to the time of the end, because it is yet for an appointed time. Then listen to what this king does. Daniel eleven thirty six, And the king shall do according to his will, and shall, he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every little g God. Okay? He's trying to exalt himself as... The, the biggest of the little g-gods. And he shall speak marvelous things against the uppercase g, God of the little g-gods. This is Christ. 
Jesus is the God over all the other gods, right? The angels and everything else over all the little G gods. The Antichrist is trying to bring himself above Christ. That's why he is Antichrist. Okay? And he shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of woman, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. But in his estate, here it is, but in his estate, he shall honor the God of forces, a God whom his fathers knew not with honor, with gold and silver and precious things. You see? So he's not Satan, right? He's the Antichrist. Okay, he's like the Lucifer type. He's still honoring his God, who is Satan. It's Satan who gives him his power. You see? That's why this period of time, it's not so much that Satan is here, but this authority being given at this time of mid-seals to him, he's going to proclaim himself, always speaking, 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 right? To magnify himself bigger. And it says, um, with a strange God who shall knowledge and increase in glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain. And at the time of the end, the king of the south shall push him and the king of the north with a whirlwind. Okay. Here we see it again. The time of the Antichrist. We could see the workers. We understand this timing of the abomination of desolation. Over and over and over. Daniel is repeating so far all of this with the exception of that portion of Daniel chapter 9, all of this was all about the first seven years of seals. All of it. This abomination of desolation, as we have taught many times, is the Mark 13 abomination of desolation. Now, where everybody's waiting to get to, Daniel chapter 12, and listen to what it says. What would that, this, where would this now put us in the end? If we're at the end here, we're at chapter 12. Listen to what it says. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. You see? He's standing up for the Jews now. See that? For thy people. Remember, if we go back to Daniel chapter 9, what did it say? It was all about thy people. You see that? Daniel 9, verse 24. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy, excuse me, and upon thy holy city. Okay? This is now changing the conversation to Judah. Okay? And it says what? And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even unto the, that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Okay, he's giving you the overview. Michael's gonna stand up. It'll come to be a time when everybody whose name is written, it takes us right to the end, okay? Watch this, even, and many shall sleep, shall rise from the dust of the earth, awake at everlasting life, sound to everlasting contempt. This is just an overview like it did in others. And it's taking you to the time of the end and then, it's going to explain, okay? And it says, and they shall be wise, and, and they that sh and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they th that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. You see, this is how you know he's just giving the overview. Daniel's gonna then stand up. It's gonna be a terrible time, but when it's all over, they're gonna be resurrected. They're gonna shine as the stars in righteousness. And then this is how you know, because in verse 12, uh, verse 4, it says, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. This is what's happening here. This is what a program like ESORD is also. This knowledge being increased so that you can use a program like ESORD and have at your fingertips the Strong's Concordance, to multiply the understanding of your studies. Not just reading the surface words, but really getting to deeper roots and understanding where they're found. Okay? 
It's exactly what we just did with the word understanding only found in Luke for that group. Clearly represented there in Daniel 11. Okay? So now he's saying, now shut up the book. You know, knowledge will go to and fro. That's what's happening also here in this ministry. And then he says, he sees the one on the banks of the river and so forth. In uh, verse Daniel 12, verse 6. And one said, to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? You see, now, now the question is saying, but, but wait a second. You just said then at that time, Michael's going to stand up and it's going to be a time of trouble like there never was. What are you talking about? You can't leave it hanging like that. That's kind of the conversation going on. And in Daniel 12, 7, it says, And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. And what does he say? And I heard, but I understood not. Then I said, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Brothers and sisters, this is ministry revealed. They have been closed up and sealed for the time of the end. When did the time of the end begin? Seven years ago. Okay? Did it mean it happened right away? It's only been five and a half years. Do we have to wait another year and a half? No. It's going to be revealed in the time of the end. And the time of the end did start because the entire story is 21 years, 22. The entire story of creation is 21,000. And the 21, 22nd thousand is going to be the new beginning and eternity. The entire picture of the Bible is a fractal from beginning to end of days. We are in the quote unquote end of days. These are the Jacob seven years that flew by as days because he was so in love. This is counted as a quote unquote end of days. It's the preparation. It's the world being prepared. The enemy is preparing. God is preparing. The spirit is preparing that bride of Christ and this time to all begin. But it doesn't actually kick in until the 50 days before the 14 years begin. Because this is like the setup, easy years. That's why you have no years here. Okay? But in the big picture, there is a story taking place. Okay? This is what's going on. This is what's happening here. Look at what it said. Many shall be purified and made white and tried. Okay. But before we get there, listen to what it says. It starts off with Michael, who's going to stand up for them. So Michael is going to stand up. Why does Michael stand up at this time? Okay. How do we know? The timing? It's talking about thy people. It's talking about the Jews now. It's talking about Judah. Okay? When, when, Daniel was, when Daniel was captured, it said he was of the captivity of who? Of Judah. So doesn't it make sense that it's talking about Judah and it says thy people, he was the house of Judah? You see? So now what happens? Now seals are over. Trumpets is about to begin. And now at this time, Michael's going to stand up. Well, what if we go to Revelation chapter 12? Okay, here's seals. This was all seals, right? This was all seals until what? And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. This is the end of the six years of seals to the seventh year. And what do you see? And her child was caught up. This is the Revelation chapter seven, great multitude rapture, the plucking, the, the harpazo, the actual rapture. This is the group that goes to paradise. Okay. When the seven years of seals are now done, it says, And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there 
1,260 days. What else is happening during this 1,260 days? Well, let's go to Revelation 11. In Revelation 11, remember what happened? Right? The Gentiles were trampling on the Gentiles, right? During the time of the Antichrist for 42 months. When the 42 months is over and, and the 144,000 are sealed and the rapture of the great multitude come in, the seven years of seals come to an end. And now what starts? And I will give power unto my two witnesses and they shall prophesy 1260 days. The first three and a half years of trumpets is 1260 days. That's why it's after the rapture. It's at the end of seals. What is also happening during this time? We were told Michael would stand up for his people. Precisely. And there was war in heaven and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. I mean, uh, yeah, and his angels. And prevailed not, and neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now everybody in heaven is rejoicing, right? Now has come salvation and strength and honor to our Christ. And then what does it say? Verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens. And ye that dwell in them, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. What is the first woe? The first woe, if we go to Revelation 8, you have the first four trumpets. After the first four trumpets, woe, woe. Whoa, the first woe is when Satan is cast down and the pit is open. This happens at the fifth trumpet. This happens at the end of the 1260 days. You following? There was a war in heaven that will last 1260 days while the two witnesses are prophesying on the earth for the 1260 days, the first half of trumpets. This is why when you come to Revelation 11, after knowing the bottomless pit is open, and you come to Revelation 11, what does it say? And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy 1260 days. What happens when they have completed their 1260 days. Verse seven. And when they have finished their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit. Hello. You see how that lines up? The beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit. If they're prophesying for 1260 days and it's truly the first half of trumpets, and they're doing it after the 42 months are already done and over during seals. And it says that they're prophesying for 1260 days, which is when their prophesying is over and Satan is cast down, having lost his battle against Michael, who Michael and his angels stood up at that time for their people. And this is when the pit is opened at the woe. That tells you that when Satan loses his battle and he's cast down to the earth and the pit is opened and it's the first woe at the fifth angel at the fifth trumpet. It's telling you that it's at the end of twelve hundred and sixty days. <clears throat> Which means. During the twelve hundred and sixty days, the first half of trumpets. The Lord is there. The temple is being rebuilt. The. Uh, the two witnesses are there. We know who they are, right? The high priest and king Melchizedek, um, uh, 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 Zerubbabel, right? Who is the rebuilding and overseeing the rebuilding of the temple. All of this is happening during this 1260 days. They're the two witnesses. This war 
in heaven is taking place with Michael and his angels and, and the dragon against his angels. All of this is happening during the first 1260 days. And when the 1260 days are over, we know that the two witnesses have finished their prophesying. And what does it say? That's the woe when the dragon and his angels have lost and are cast down to the earth. And it's the first woe. So what we're seeing is that the first half of trumpets, what is taking place? Well, when we go back to Zechariah chapter 6, we see this conversation of the two candlesticks and so forth, right into 3, 4, 5, and into 6. We see that it's Joshua, who is the Yeshua type. We see the branch, who is Zerubbabel, and they rule between the two of them. You see? This is precisely the timing of the two witnesses. So when you see in Daniel, when Michael, chapter, in Daniel chapter 12, when Michael at that time stands up, it's during a time when he's going to war against Satan and his angels. While the rebuilding of the temple and everything is taking place in Jerusalem while it's being protected and surrounded. You following? And then what happens? Well, he's saying it's going to now be a time within this period of time that is going to become a time of trouble such as was never since there was a nation even under this time. So what are we seeing here? When Satan's cast down, where do you think we are now? Mark's discourse is done. We're now moving into Matthew's time. We're now moving into Matthew's time. And what do we see? Well, we've talked on this many times. There's a reason why Matthew's discourse in the first half only has false prophet because Antichrist was removed. He was killed. But what do we know? At the time of the abomination of desolation, this is when Satan loses his battle, is cast down to the earth. And what is he going to do? He's going to go stand in the holy place. He's actually going to, now they're going to go. The pit is going to open and all three of them will be back. It'll be Satan, the false prophet, and Antichrist who has come out of the bottomless pit. And they're going to what? Stand in the holy place. This is the second abomination of desolation. This is the one that happens at the woe or shortly after the woe. This is, remember, the, the first 1260 days while that battle is taking place in the heavens on the earth, the temple is being rebuilt. Let's go back into Daniel and see what Daniel says, <coughs> excuse me, about this exact period of time in Daniel 12. He says, he says that this time, this craziness that's going to happen when Satan is cast down and he's lost that battle, that Satan's time <clears throat> is going to last for a time, times, and a half. You see, there's no and in between, which it doesn't mean one plus two plus a half, which is three and a half. It means one, two plus a half. So it's like you're counting one, two, three, four, five and a half. Does that mean add them all together? No, it's five and then a half. This is two and a half year period of time. So that means what? That means after the 1260, there's a two and a half year period of time where he's going to scatter all of the people and everything that were in Jerusalem. They're going to fly on the wings of eagles and it's going to last two and a half years. And when it's done, these two and a half years are done, it is finished. Do you think this is at the end of the seventh trumpet? Nope. It's at the end of the sixth. It's at the end of the sixth. You're going to see how all this plays out. So where is this time, end times, and half a time? Well, you'll see in Daniel, uh, in Revelation chapter 12, it, there's an and in between. So when, when Satan is cast out and there's the woe, what does he do? It says uh, in Revelation 12, 13, 
And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman, which brought forth the man child. And to the woman were given two great wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into a place where she is nourished for a time, comma, and times, comma, and half a time from the face of the serpent. She's flying away to a place protected till the end of the 14 years. Let me give you a picture. One year, two years, three years of trumpets and a half. Okay? So in the 10 and a half years total of tribulation, okay, in the 11th year, which is 10 and a half years, Satan now will have lost after that 1260 days. Cast down to the earth, the temple's been rebuilt now. It's no longer the fleshly temple that was over here. It's this physical temple that was built. And Satan's cast down. 1260 days are done. They now fly away on the wings of eagles for a time, times, and a half a time. They're gone for the final three and a half years, right to the end of the 14 years. But in Daniel, it said that Satan's going to have time times and a half, which is only two and a half, which takes you to the end of the 13 years, which means out of the final three and a half years of trumpets, Satan's time and rule is going to last two and a half years. Everybody, when they read, whenever you hear pastors teach on it or anybody, and they go to Daniel 12, They've convinced you that Daniel 12 and Daniel and Revelation 12 are the same three and a half years. They are the same period of time, but Daniel 12, uh, um, Revelation 12 is one year longer. And it's all because of the addition of the word and. And what happens? She, they're now going to be protected. They're going to be a place protected in the wilderness for the final three and a half years. While Satan brings his destruction and devastation and, and, and stands in the temple for the abomination of desolation in Matthew, until what? Until his two and a half years are done. Remember what it said. It said until it is finished. But I just told you it'll be finished at the end of the sixth trumpet. It'll be at the end of the sixth trumpet, not at the end of the seventh trumpet. And listen to what Revelation chapter 10 says. It's the same conversation that you read uh, in, in Daniel chapter 12. And it said, um, uh, seal it up. See, and lifted up his hand unto heaven in Revelation 10, 5 and 6. Uh, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created the heaven and all things that are therein, the earth that are all things that are in, the sea and all things that are therein, that there should be time no longer. Now listen to this, verse 7. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, meaning it hasn't sounded yet. So the seventh year hasn't quite sounded. It's the end of the sixth, and the seventh is about to sound. When he shall begin to sound, that seventh trumpet, <clears throat> the mystery of God should be finished. It's not even the seventh trumpet. What did Daniel say? Daniel told us the exact same thing. That when his two and a half years, not three and a half, but two and a half are done, it shall be finished. This is why when you go back to Daniel chapter 9, in Daniel chapter 9, we see the first seven weeks of years that was all the seal stuff then you've got three and a half years where the rebuilding of the city and the streets the wall and the temple takes place after those three and a half years why do you think it says messiah is cut off because messiah was here messiah is cut off because why because satan's been cast down the pit was open see and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the sanctuary and the city uh, so destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof. See, this sanctuary now, see? <coughs> this one 
isn't so much the saint, but it's the actual sanctuary, the sacred place. Listen to what it says. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. So when he's cast down and the pit is open, he's going to go after them with a flood. And it says, unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. So from the time of Messiah being cut off at mid-trumpets, this is two and a half years. He goes after them with a flood, and then there's an end of a war of some type. Okay, well, let's go back real quick to Revelation chapter 12, and you're going to see this. What does he do? He goes after them with a flood. And then the earth opens up and it swallows it. So what does he do? He's going after them with a flood. <clears throat> so we know this is at the first woe, at the fifth trumpet. We know that his time is going to last two and a half years out of the three and a half, bringing it to the end when he shall have finished to have scattered the people. The end of the sixth seal, right as the seventh is about, uh, sorry, sixth trumpet, right as the seventh trumpet is about to sound. We see that he's going after them with a flood, just like Daniel uh, 9 said. If you go to Revelation 11, not only do we have the flood, but what did it say he would do? It says that the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit shall make war against the two witnesses and kill them. This is the war from Daniel chapter 9. This is the war that he makes. He goes after them with a flood. And until the end of the war, desolations are determined. How long is this war going to last? Well, when did they finish their testimony? At the end of the 1260 days. And he's here for what? Two and a half years. Until he has finished the scattering. So it's two and a half years of war. <coughs> excuse me, against the two witnesses. So when the two witnesses are killed, when are they killed? It just so happens they're killed at the end of the sixth seal. Two and a half years later. I'm uh, sorry, at the end of the sixth trumpet. I said it again. At the end of the sixth trumpet, which is two and a half years later. Are you following? So if Daniel 12 and Revelation 12 proved that for them, in the portion that, the, that Satan gets in the opening of the pit is two and a half years, and yet there was three and a half years left. Now you can see why the seventh trumpet wasn't yet sounded in the seventh year, never yet began, <coughs> because Satan only had two and a half of the last three and a half. Well, guess what? When you go back to Daniel chapter 9, now you'll be able to understand why. Daniel 9, 27, there's one more week or one more year of Shabuah of Feast of Weeks to go. That he that confirms the covenant is Messiah. It is when the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives. And it's in the midst of that week that he's going to cause the sacrifice and the oblation that the enemy had done in the temple to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, He's going to make it desolate. This is the Son of Man returning, the Messiah, Lord Jesus Christ, returning feet down on the Mount of Olives. This is Zechariah chapter 12, when he returns feet down and he brings destruction against the enemy and binds Satan. That's why there's one year left. That's why Daniel 12 is two and a half of the final three and a half years of trumpets. Are you following this now? It's so beautiful to understand and to see. Now listen to what he says as we wind this down. Look at what it says. Uh, in verse 10, many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Verse 11, and from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away. Who was this daily sacrifice taken away? It was the rapture. It's the same one talked about in 11 and in chapter 8. Or 7 or whatever it was of Daniel. It's the same daily sacrifice being taken away that's talked about. 
And what does it say? From the time that the daily sacrifice was taken away, okay? From the time of the rapture to the end of seals. Okay? Listen to what it says. Comma and the abomination of desolation set up. So from the time of the end of seals to the time that the abomination of desolation is set up. Okay? Meaning the rapture happened, the seals comes to an end, and there's a period that it takes before the abomination of desolation is set up. What abomination of desolation? You got it. It's the Matthew abomination of desolation. Because what abomination of desolation is it? It's the one where the temple had to be built so that he can step into it and declare himself God. Do you understand why 2 Thessalonians chapter 2? You see? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it's the one from the bottomless pit. When he comes out from the bottomless pit and then they go in and they declare themselves in the temple. This one, the temple had to be built for him to be able to go in and declare himself God. Do you understand why Daniel chapter 12 now? Listen to what it says. From the time, so when the, when the rapture happens and seals comes to an end. So from that time, to the time that the abomination of desolation can be set up shall be 1,290 days. What was the 1,260 days? The first half of trumpets. So from the time of the rapture in the seventh year of seals till seals comes to an end, it's 1,260 days for them to rebuild the city and the temple and the streets and the Lord is on Zion until what? Until he's cut off. And when he's cut off, what's going to happen? There's going to be 30 days for them to finish putting in the, the idol, whatever abomination this is going to look like. There's the additional 30 days for them to get it set up, 1260 to 1290. Hello? This is the Matthew abomination. And so from this point, how long is Satan going to get when the pit is opened? He's going to get his time, times and a half. He's got two and a half years. And when the two and a half years are over, and it says now that all these things shall be finished, when are they finished? When the Lord returns, feet down on the Mount of Olives, when the whole world will see him as lightning from one end unto the other. So guess what happens? You go to Matthew 24. We see the abomination of desolation. Remember, it was only false prophet. Then you get abomination of desolation. The temple is built. And what do you see? False Christ and false prophet. Why? Because the false prophet, uh, uh, the, the false Christ, the Antichrist, the beast is brought up from the pit. That's why he's back again. And how long? You see, and except those days, oh, it's going to be worse than it was. Then since the world was created, just like they said, just like Michael said, or Daniel said with Michael there. And so there's your abomination of desolation. It's going to last now two and a half years. And then what happens? When the two and a half years are done, listen to what it says. For as lightning lighteth out of the east and shineth out of the west, e uh, shineth even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered immediately after the tribulation of those days. Here he is. And then shall the sign of the Son of Man appear, and all the tribes of the earth shall mourn. And listen to this. And he shall send his angel with the sound of a great trumpet, the seventh trumpet. And he shall gather together his elect from the four winds. Brothers and sisters, this is the end of the sixth trumpet. And the end of the 13 years from the beginning of tribulation. And that's why in Zechariah chapter 14 is the Son of Man returning feet down on the Mount of Olives, bringing destruction and devastation against all those who came against Jerusalem, binding Satan for a thousand years. And that's why Daniel chapter 12, uh, uh, chapter 9 had that final year. It is Messiah renewing the covenant that he made with all people and all nations at the beginning 
or at the end in the seventh seal to start the beginning of trumpets. It's exactly what you read. That's why Daniel chapter seven, that all nations and dominion was given unto him and so on and so forth. But it was cut off when Satan was cast down and the pit was opened. Brothers and sisters, this is absolutely incredible to understand these things, to dig into them, to see them for yourselves and understand them. You see, there's a difference between 42 months, 1260 days, and time and times and half a time. They are the second, approximately, you can say, second half of seals, the first half of trumpets. It's 42 months, then that final year of seals, then 1260 days, the first half of trumpets, then time and times and half a time, which are the second half of trumpets. 42 months and 1260 days are not the same thing. That's why they are given to us differently. The mystery, and it's not a mystery when you understand the 14 years, is what are the first two and a half years of the tribulation of seals. It's World War III. That's why I'm going to finish with this in Revelation chapter 12. You see it right here. I told you, you see, you've got this. I believe this is the stone's throw to, to Luke 21. Men's hearts failing them for fear of looking after this. And what do you have? before she travailed, right? So if this is the travailing, that means before she travailed, the escape must happen. And you get this from Isaiah chapter 66, verse seven, okay? Before she travailed, she brought forth. So before the travailing is the pre-trib escape of the bride of Christ. It's the same thing we talked about in 1 Corinthians 15, going in reverse from verse 8, where Paul says he was one as one born out of due time. That's the pre-trib. And then you go in reverse and it's the seals time going into trumpets and the workers and so forth. He is representing before the travailing, being brought forth. One born premature out of due time. That means the bride of Christ in Revelation chapter 12, must be gone before verse 2 begins and the travailing starts. Listen to what it says next. So now we can see that the pre-trib escape of Luke's group, the bride of Christ, goes before the travailing. And then what does it say? Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. So if we go back to Revelation chapter 12, you see what? You see that the bride had to be gone before the travailing. But then you see she was delivered of a man-child in the travailing portion, but it was before, <coughs> excuse me, the pain came. This represents the 40 days of the Son of Man being here. It is the revelation of the 40 days of the Son of Man. It is the white horse rider, 40 days. Pained because he had to be here and his time done before the pains begin, which is represented by the first two and a half years of seals, which is why Marx and his tribulation beginning at nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, the red horse rider says that just this here, are the beginnings of sorrows, which happens before what? Before the abomination of desolation. The abomination of desolation is <clears throat> what begins at the time of verse three and the time of Revelation 13. This is the abomination of desolation. This is Revelation 13. This is when the Antichrist has the power of of the lion, the, the bear, and the leopard. This is the beast getting that power and authority to continue for 42 months. He'll continue to 42 months 
until the Son of Man comes, the, 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 the man-child comes at the end of the sixth seal when the 42 months are done. The 144,000 are sealed who will do that ruling for him. And then you have the rapture of the great multitude. This is that period of 42 months. When those 42 months are done, the 1260 days begin. Those 1260 days are the two witnesses. It represents the war taking place against Satan and Michael. When he's cast down, the 1260 days are over and it's the first woe to the earth. Those 1260 days are done. The temple was rebuilt, the city and the streets. Messiah is cut off and mid trumpets, 10 and a half years since tribulation began. Mid trumpets, 1260 days. It will take an additional 30 days for the abomination to be set up as the fleeing had now taken place, that he goes after them with water from his mouth, and they're gone now for, tw uh, for time and times and half a time, during which time Satan and those with him will rule for two and a half of time, times and a half, until his reign is over, till this war that he has gone after the two witnesses comes to an end at the sixth trumpet. Then, when he had finished his time, the Lord will return feet down on the Mount of Olives, will destroy Satan, his enemy, and all those who have come against. <clears throat> and when this final year of the time and times and half a time is complete, he will bring them back into Jerusalem, where it will then be the end of the 14 years, and he will bring them back to restore them into their land for the final jubilee and the beginning of the millennial reign. Brothers and sisters, it is the story of the entirety of tribulation from the gospel or from the book of Daniel and the difference between seals and trumpets is revealed in seals as the temple covered in skin, covered in flesh that is portable. And the future coming third temple that the Jews have been waiting for, seals and trumpets, mark of the beast, antichrist being brought back, the beast being brought back from the pit, Satan here, and them declaring in this temple at that time in trumpets. That is the revelation of the abomination of desolation of Mark to the abomination of desolation in Matthew revealed from the book of Daniel to the Gospels to the book of Revelation. Brothers and sisters, I pray it blesses you. My throat is finished. I am done, but I love it. And I would do it all over again, even if I had to do it right now. But thank goodness I don't. God bless you. God bless your families. I pray this blesses you. Study it, seek it, search it out for yourselves. And know that you have understanding of the open book that was sealed. God bless you. Bye for now.